but I think the development of full artificial intelligence will spell the end of the human race. It's a flying object, and we don't know what it is. I would hope somebody is checking it out. I'm glad the Pentagon is looking at this, because if it poses a threat, I want them on top of it. Well, the craft generates its own gravitational field. So you said there's light in the sky? The Internet has become the command center for criminals and terrorists. That's, that's what we're instructed to say. Roswell, Area 51, alien kept deep under the ground. All right, welcome to Troubled Minds. Let's start over. Let's try that again. Sorry about that. P- pressing all the wrong buttons because that's how things work sometimes. Welcome to Troubled Minds Radio. This is the show where we get together Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and talk about all the crazy things that we're not allowed to talk about. You know what they are. Aliens, conspiracy, the paranormal, and all the rest of that. And we're doing this live. If you want to be part of the show tonight, the number to call is 702-957-1037. That's 702-957-1037. Thank you guys for pointing out in the chat that I muted myself. Uh, that's always embarrassing, starting the radio show muted. Oh, well, what can you do? Uh, <laughs> things happen. And and all right, so as things happen and we talk about all this crazy stuff, that's uh, that's what we do. That's uh, one of the we always say on this show. You know, you kind of get can't can't really gather around the water cooler and uh, talk to talk to regular, let's say normies. You can't talk to normies about you know uh, portals and Cthulhu and uh, the metaverse and you know things like this uh, <laughs> propaganda conspiracy. You can't do it. You just can't do it because people look at you like you're insane. And so this is. Uh, sort of one of those outlets, one of those places you can come talk about all of those things and, you know, not uh, not be ridiculed because it isn't, this isn't about the truth. This show is not the truth, all right? And I, and I mean that, not saying I'm here lying to anybody. I'm saying that the, the, the nature of our reality is quite a bit larger 
than uh, we're led to believe. And I truly believe that's the case. And so w- what, what, what this is all about is getting together and considering those possibilities, what the world really looks like and uh, w- how, it, how that affects us if these things may or may not be true. And, of course, getting into some of the mythologies of why we consider these things and what, you know, where, where some of this stuff came from and how long it's been you know, sort of in the zeitgeist or been believed or whatnot. So, you know, like I said, it's not it, talking about portals and Mount Shasta in Lemuria, which is what we're talking about tonight, by the way, is not really water cooler type conversation. So you're definitely in a spot here if you enjoy that type of stuff. And we're going to get to a bunch of that tonight. And uh, as usual, we're taking your phone calls. If you want to be part of the show, like I said, there at 702-957-1037. That's 702-957-1037. Just re- repeating myself here a little bit because I can't, can't remember which part got muted and which part did not. So here we go. All right. So so the thing is this, right? Uh, oh, uh, a couple more things. Let's see. Let's get all the things out of the way. You can also join the Discord at troubledminds.org. That's the official website of uh, Troubled Minds. You can find all the things there. There's a store there. There's the, the podcast. There's all the things that you would come to expect from a website. The phone number's right on top, the Discord link. And Discord's amazing. It's a free chat client, voice client. You can share links and photographs and the, the whole thing, right? It's a, As of right now, it's uncensored, and they're, they're cracking down a little bit, but it's not quite Facebook level. So I'm still a Discord fan. If they start kicking people out for saying, uh, you know, the things like we say, then we got a different problem and we'll go somewhere else. But for right now, Discord uh, still has my thumbs up, my uh, my uh, seal of approval, and it is free. It's hard to go wrong. If you hate it, just quit. And there you go. You know, just uh, delete it and it's done. But uh, but OK, so we have one Discord channel going on and another one on Fringe. So go to uh, fringe.fm slash chat and that will give you a direct Discord link to the Fringe chat room. I'm watching all of them in all the places because we're streaming on Rockfin, YouTube, DLive, Twitter, and of course, uh, broadcasting live on the Fringe FM. And I'm watching all the chat rooms, trying to keep up with all of it, which is, uh, you know, not as easy as it looks. Everything looks easier on TV, and uh, that's why that's why I'm on TV. Uh, so anyway, uh, point being is that uh, that's, that's what we're doing tonight. We're, we're doing all that, and the, this conversation goes two ways. So I begin it uh, with some pretty weird crazy stuff typically and then uh, hopefully you guys know a little something about this and can chime in and i do understand uh happy thanksgiving to everybody that celebrates it it is a wednesday night the day before thanksgiving so i I do understand that people have different traditions maybe you're out shooting your turkey right now or something like i don't know i don't know what's going on everybody does it different you know growing up we did tamales and stuff for the holidays not just on um you know uh uh, Thanksgiving, but also Christmas. So, you know, it just depends. It depends on everybody's got their own traditions. And if uh, I've uh, basically you're excused if you've been uh, if you're busy tonight and you got family obligations, I completely understand. But we're going to be doing this tonight and tomorrow night. Uh, so we will be here. Trouble Minds will be here for you. If you're stuck working or you're stuck at home and can't travel or whatever, whatever's going on, uh, you got troubled minds the next couple of days. So there you go. Just so you know. All right. So let's see. Tonight. Now. Now. OK. Now, yesterday, I think we had a banger of a show, right? Like I said, I don't like to say that too often because it's a little egotistical. Uh, and not only that, uh, they all can't be bangers of a show. So once in a while, when you when you do a really do one really well, uh, well, it's just what it is. So kind of piggybacking off of that idea yesterday, which was sort of the metaverse, right? Uh, this this new reality that we're facing and uh, the rest of this, meaning, meaning, okay, this, the new reality is the metaverse is you go into it, right, with these, these uh, ocular rift goggles or oculus rift, whatever the hell they're calling these things. And then you go, you, you know, we talked about church yesterday and how uh, it's crazy that you could go into a church service with these things on in the metaverse. And that's happening on Sunday, by the way. The very first church service in the metaverse is happening on Sunday uh, uh, from a... um, a a, a, um, a church in Phoenix, in I think it's, uh, uh, what is it? What's that uh, ritzy area out there in Phoenix? I can't remember. But uh, but uh, uh, Glendale, maybe? Anyway, so, so point being is this, right? So kind of bouncing off of that, I made the joke yesterday that in the metaverse, if you went to a church service, you could have, for instance, oh, I don't know, up on the altar in this gigantic cathedral in the metaverse, you could have a portal open up and Cthulhu walk out, right? And then tickle the brain in just a particular 
particular way to make you believe it's a godlike experience. All right. So I thought it interesting today that maybe we'll talk about portals again, uh, but different types of portals. Right. We're talking about uh, Lemuria tonight and uh, some of the some of the things like there's there's a whole whole bunch like I couldn't. Uh, yeah. Is it Scottsdale? Thanks. Thanks, Marge. I see there in the chat. Uh, the, so so the thing is this. Right. With Lemuria, or the lost, the fabled lost continent of Mu, M-U, uh, there's a lot to this, it, because it, it seems like, you know, there's, there's, there's a, a legend of a war between Lemuria and Atlantis, there's these uh, uh, maybe ultra-terrestrials that have been here forever on Earth, and they're not, not flesh and blood, they're sort of like dimensional creatures that live in the fifth dimension or something like this. I mean, it's, it's nuts. It's nuts. Right. But again, to me, like I said, there are people that believe this stuff and, you know, kind of press it and say that this is real. This is the real reality. And we're living in, you know, the matrix of sorts. And we said this, we've talked about this on the show and, and I'm open to these ideas. That's why we discuss this stuff, but I don't know. I am not the arbiter of truth. So don't take me as saying these things as, Oh, Michael Strange is too woo for you. No, I don't know. I don't know. But if tonight is too woo for you, well, um, <laughs> you might be in the right place. <laughs> so anyway, all right. So so that's what's on my mind tonight is, is Lemuria, all right? And not just that, right? There's supposedly a portal in Northern California in a place called Mount Shasta. Anybody ever been up in that 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 neck of the woods? It's a it's a beautiful place. It's a, I spent a lot of time up there in the summers growing up, and it's a it's gorgeous. It's just one of those places that's uh you know very uh got the the volcanic residue of the. Uh, you know, explosion of Mount Shasta, you know, I don't know how many hundreds or thousands of years ago. It was a long, long time ago. But Mount Shasta itself, the mountain, is said to harbor an ancient city by the name of Telos, T-E-L-O-S, Telos, Telos. I'm going to say Telos because it sounds better, all right? Now, now the thing is, it's, it's, it's a little strange because I'm just kind of giving you an idea of where we're starting tonight. And then I'm going to range back and there's a whole bunch of stuff going on here. Because it's all over the place. It's, it's so it's not just going back to the you know uh, everybody's heard of Atlantis, all right. Everybody knows the lost continent of Atlantis, right? The lost city of Atlantis. Well, that in particular is not actually in in the mythology of world history in the Wu circles, let's say, in the Ascension circles or whatever, whatever you want to call it. I don't know. Like too Wu for you, right? Too Wu for me for sure. But it doesn't matter. We're talking about it anyway. But the thing is this, right? If you go all the way back to uh, Atlantis, there was a civilization prior, they say, prior to Atlantis named Lemuria, L-E-M-U-R-I-A. And again, it, so the, the individuals that lived there were not people. They were um, hybrids. They were uh, interdimensional things, um, enlightened souls. And so, so we have this weird, uh, back to the Graham Hancock quote, right? We are a species with amnesia because we forget where we came from. And I think some of that's intentional. Some of that's maybe the flood, the great flood, and these other cataclysms and things that have happened in history. So I think some of that stuff is, is completely legitimate. But this one, I'm not so sure because it goes back so far. It's hard to really pin down exactly where, when, and why with this type of stuff, right? And so uh, that's what's on my mind tonight. We're talking about Lemuria. We're talking about Mount Shasta and a portal that goes to an underground city that supposedly houses refugees from Lemuria because, of course, it doesn't exist anymore. It's one of those uh, civilizations that's that's been, um, uh, well, uh, uh, let's say... Uh, I don't know, defunct? I don't know. What what would you say? Unfunctified? I don't know. It, it's, it no longer exists, all right? Uh, but they say that there are refugees that escaped from the cataclysm of Lemuria and ended up in Mount Shasta, all right? Mount Shasta, Northern California, about... Uh, we'll get to that in a sec. Anyway, so, so basically it's this. The, the idea tonight is this. Is this possible? that we have ultra-terrestrial refugees from an ancient continent that predates Atlantis that live in an underground city that, by the way, is not only an underground city named Telos, 
it is an underground city that is connected to a larger network underground as part of Agartha, right? We've talked about Agartha before. And so this is kind of all encompassing in that uh, it, it connects a ton of these woo woo conspiracies together. And you get a lot of the, you know, the, the shamanistic uh, pilgrimage type stuff out to Mount Shasta because. There's all kinds of stuff up there. The crazy part about Mount Shasta, if you guys have never been there, like I said, I spent a lot of time there. We're talking, again, Northern California, let's say 30, 40 miles uh, just south of the Oregon border. Um, It's just a beautiful area. But the thing is, there's all kinds of crazy stories about aliens up there, right? About uh, these lenticular clouds that surround the mountain, and they say that these UFOs fly in and out of the mountain, and there's a lot of weird sightings that go on up there, right? And not only that, they, there's there's been uh, uh, tales of these small people, like, you know, three or four foot tall people, like this tribe of who knows what they are. They, they've been spotted around around and in and on Mount Shasta itself. And so you have, not only do you have, uh, you know, aliens, you have these weird lenticular clouds that seem to wrap themselves around the mountain like they're hiding something. Then you have these, uh, these stories of Lemuria and these interdimensional creatures that live inside the mountain itself. It's wild, and then you have the the little people or whatever these these little these little folk are called. It's nuts. There's a ton, a ton of things happening around this spot, and so there's so like I said, it, it kind of encompasses all things, all of these bizarre conspiracy angles. In that we're talking portals, right? We're talking Mount Shasta may or may not be a power spot, one of those ley line conjunction sort of situations where uh, people are drawn to it uh, because it is uh, an entrance to something. It is a whether it happens to be a portal to some other 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 dimension, right? Something like this, or if there's an actual doorway into a city that goes beneath the mountain. I don't know. Tons of stuff here. It's crazy, like the scope of this. And again, Lemuria goes back to uh, all kinds of things. Like I said, it predates Atlantis. It's uh, it's one of those things that uh, if everybody remembers good old Edgar Cayce, uh, one of the most uh, prominent psychics probably ever of modern times. He talked a lot about Atlanteans, about Lemuria, about things like this. And uh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what to think. So we're going to get into that as, as we go tonight. And that's what's on my mind. One more time. What do you know about this? And it's okay if it's, this is too woo for you. And it, it's completely cool to, to think that way because I'm not telling you what to think. I'm just saying, let's talk about this. People believe this. Let's consider the possibility. And so the thing is, what do you know about Lemuria? L-E-M-U-R-I-A. Supposedly an ancient civilization that predates Atlantis. All right. Ultra terrestrials been here for thousands and thousands, maybe millions of years on Earth. And what do you know about Mount Shasta and this supposed portal that goes to an underground city named Telos? T-E-L-O-S. That's what we're talking about tonight. And we'll get into some articles here in just a sec. But uh, love to hear your thoughts on this. And do you think this is too woo? A little bit too, uh, well, I don't know, uh, ascension, spiritual type driven stuff. And that's okay with me because, like I said, we range far and wide. And uh, I'm not scared. I'm not. If I'm not scared of a portal and Cthulhu coming out, I'm certainly not scared of a little bit of woo and a uh, an actual mountain or sorry, city under the mountain. Let's start here. Let's start here uh, to explain exactly what this is. One more time. 702-957-1037. Here we go. This is from mythology.net. All right. And yeah, what is Lemuria? Let's begin here, shall we? An ancient and advanced race of beings purportedly inhabited a landmass which sunk into the ocean, spreading the survivors to all corners of the earth. Uh, It says, though debunked by modern science, the mythical island of Lemuria remains a reality to futurists and mystics today. All right, there we go. And uh, where does this begin? Uh, So Lemuria is supposedly located, uh, the lost lost continent of Mu is also, as as it's known, just off the coast of uh, North America and uh, South America, kind of in the Pacific Ocean. They They have the map here. And let's see, can we make this full size? I don't think we can. Anyway, all right. So Lemuria is a mythological lost continent located in the Indian or Pacific Ocean. All right. The name is sometimes used interchangeably with the name of another lost continent called Mu, M-U. Lemuria is said to share many of its uh, attributes with a more well-known sunken landmass, Atlantis. 
Uh, both were represented as idyllic paradises, crime-free, with abundant food sources, and as places where the inhabitants had the ability to communicate with each other telepathically, according to theosophists, right? All right, and this is where we begin. Uh, so the origins of this story. Now, this is pretty pretty fascinating to me. Is Like I said, I like to do this stuff because I've heard of a lot of this stuff. I, You know, I'm in, in a cursory manner familiar with most of these ideas in, in some way or another because uh, a lot of them intersect, right? The, again, you talk about Atlantis, Lemuria comes up. So it's, uh, it's one of those things where you kind of know about it, but uh, kind of digging into some of the um, the actual uh, where where these ideas originated is is pretty fantastic to me. So we'll do a little bit of that tonight, and a little bit of like I said, a little bit of uh, some of this anthropology type stuff where this the this information came from. But then, of course, we'll get into portals and underground cities, so, uh, small people that live on Mount Shasta, and of course, uh, ultra uh, what do you call them? Ultra terrestrials, not aliens, but individuals, entities who have lived here on Earth for millions of years. So there we go. Uh, All right, let's see. Uh, So, okay, with the theory of evolution coming to the fore in the 19th century, many people were starting to think differently about life and were beginning to challenge the worldview. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Let's do that. Uh, This this included postulates on ancient civilizations and the uh, conception of new forms of mysticism like theosophy. And so we have this individual by the name of de Bourbourg, all right, Charles Etienne Brassier de Bourbourg, and I'm probably not going to say that again. But anyway, I'll, uh, I'll abbreviate it. So early references to the lost continent of Lemuria or Mu can be found in 1864 with Brasseur. I'm going to just call him that. Uh, he, an archaeologist and historian. Now, Brasseur had become enamored with the ancient Mayan civilization after exploring Mayan ruins in the Yucatan region and traveled to Spain to view more artifacts firsthand. There, he came across an alleged guide to Mayan hieroglyphics and used the guide to decode an ancient Mayan manuscript. All right, you see, when I said this range is far and wide, I wasn't kidding. Now, we're talking about the Mayans, right? Everybody knows this. We're talking about the Yucatan Peninsula. We're talking about Central America, South America. We're talking about all kinds of stuff. But this is where this legend begins, at least in an anthropological fashion. All right. So here we go. Uh, So he came across these Mayan manuscripts. All right. He claimed to have. uh, And let's see. uh, He came across the alleged guide to Mayan hieroglyphics and used the guide to decode an ancient Mayan manuscript. He claimed to have discovered an ancient land which had sunk into the sea due to a cataclysmic volcanic eruption. In the guide, he found characters that corresponded to the letters M and U, which were associated with the mysterious sunken landmass. With this information, he concluded that the landmass was called Mu. MU. Unfortunately, his interpretations turned out to be erroneous, they say, as later scholars discovered. Furthermore, Mayan uh, hieroglyphics were only successfully decoded in the mid-20th century. So there we go. That's how this begins, right? So the guy finds these supposed, again, as always, right, there's for every, like I said, you ask a question to a thousand different people, you get a thousand different answers. So this is sort of the debunkers version of this, which is fine because we, we need to find the history of where this came from. But the, the, the nuttiest part is that he found this information on an ancient Mayan manuscript. All right. And so you're like, wait, what? Like, how, how do we start there? And so that's where we begin tonight. And so we're talking about, of course, the lost continent of Mu, also known as Lemuria, which was a uh, existed predating Atlantis. And so, like I said, uh, a lot of people have heard of Atlantis, but not this thing in particular. But uh, we're going to talk about it because why not? There's tons to talk about. Like I said, if this is too woo for you, well, um, happy Thanksgiving. <laughs> it is, of course, the day before Thanksgiving, and we're, we're still doing our thing, undeterred. I am not scared to stream the day before Thanksgiving or on Thanksgiving itself because, well, we do talk about portals and Cthulhu after all. So as we do this and continue trucking and talking about this stuff, let's uh, get to this. The question tonight, have you heard of Lemuria? Do you think it exists? What about the lost continent of Mu? And do you think this is too woo for you? And if it's not, or if it is, completely fine. Either way, looking to hear your thoughts. What do you know about this? And do you think there are ultra-terrestrials that have been living here on Earth for thousands or even millions of years? 
Lots here, lots to think about, lots to talk about, per usual. Love to hear your thoughts. 702-957-1037. That's 702-957-1037. This is Troubled Minds. I'm Michael Strange. Don't go anywhere. More Lemuria and you after the break. Be right back. Welcome back to Troubled Minds. I'm your host, Michael Strange, and we are streaming on Rockfin, YouTube, DLive, and Twitter. And we are broadcasting live on the Fringe FM. Tonight, we're talking about the lost continent of Mu, also known as Lemuria, and dates back to a time previous to Atlantis. What do you know about this? Do you think this is too woo for you? Or do you think this is possible? And that's what's on my mind tonight. Taking your phone calls at 702-957-1037. That's 702-957-1037. Love to hear your thoughts on this. Um, like, first off, the questions tonight. Have you ever heard of Lemuria? Have you ever heard of this lost continent of Mu? And it's, it's kind of deep into those esoteric circles, right? This is one of those ones that goes way, way, way back. And in many cases, uh, they've been able to, you know, Edgar Casey in particular, one of the most notable psychics of the last couple hundred years, this guy says that he was able to channel people from Atlantis and Lemuria. And he was able to uh, contact these entities, these ultra-terrestrials, or whatever they're called now. And uh, that's how he was, he's been able to uh, verify that this place actually existed. So we have this anthropology uh, sort of uh, you know, link back to the Mayans and this mysterious document that was translated, and they got the letters M-U out of it, which, of course, is the lost continent of Mu. And then that, of course, becomes Lemuria. So before we get back to Lemuria and what all this is and what got me started on this, was this underground city named Telos, T-E-L-O-S, in Mount Shasta, all right? Mount Shasta, again, uh, a sacred mountain in Northern California, of all places, right? Let's go, let's go there. Let's go there. Just a moment, and we'll start, we'll start here. Uh, but apparently, yeah, so apparently, the, this, like I said, this goes all over the place, including uh, they say that Lemuria and Atlantis were at war with each other. How long ago? You tell me. It could be a million years. It could be a very, very, very long time ago. So anyway, so here we go. So a couple things. Okay, actually, before we get to Mount Shasta, just a couple things about Lemuria and what they say about some of the entities that live there, these ultra terrestrials, which we've talked about on this show quite a lot, right? In that uh, if there's aliens out there, well, they may be from the cosmos, right? They may not be. Maybe they're uh, from, they live here on this planet just in a dimensional shift. And so they're sharing the same space just in like a fourth or fifth dimensional sort of thing. Like, and so that's what they say about these Lemurians, okay? Now, this is from crystallinks.com. And here we go. Uh, the, let's see, where is it? Uh, okay, so the uh, Lemuria Urmu is a mythical continent that allegedly was located in the Pacific Ocean or the Pacific Ring of Fire. Today, we read about accelerating natural disasters in that area. That's not what I wanted. Okay, here's, now here's the, here's the nutty part. This is where it starts to get good. The original Lemurians were thought projections created by the algorithms of a simulation. They were tall, thin, ethereal beings who could take on different forms. They allegedly came from the Pleiades remaining on this planet until the end of their experiment. They could move through space and time and had heightened abilities. Now, the reason they came here varies depending on which researcher you read about. Some believe they came here to seed the human race, while others believe they stayed and are monitoring and adjusting human evolution. They explored and recorded their findings through telepathy and technologies beyond human understanding. And there you go. That's how this starts, right? And there's a whole list of like uh, um, what what some of these entities are supposedly capable of. Like uh, uh, like here, here's here's eleven traits of Lemurians. Here's 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 other things. Yeah, from Lemuria, 
uh, the the lost continent of Moo. They say they have they are instinctive and intuitive. They have supernatural powers in that uh, it's telepathy, right? They have infinite knowledge, uh, meaning of course uh, their their knowledge was boundless. They carried out extraordinary ventures, but all these stopped when they were captured by a volatile army during the downfall of Lemuria, which again seems to be unclear exactly who that was. Like, who attacked it? Who, which caused this huge cataclysm to make Lemuria or Mu sink into the ocean, right? Very much like Atlantis. And so they say that there was a war, possibly, between Atlantis and Lemuria for, these, uh, for, for the right to this planet. Who knows? Like, who knows what, what we're really talking about? Because a lot of this stuff is way, way, way back. And again, you know, it's, it's through, uh, you get a lot of the information through mediums like uh, Edgar Casey and things like this. Uh, so uh, infinite knowledge. So they were able to tap into that Akashic record, which we've talked about quite a bit on this show. Uh, feminine ideology. It says that uh, Lemuria gave birth to Atlantis and other civilizations. So they did predate. They're saying Lemuria or the lost continent of Mu was the first civilization here on Earth. And so they gave birth to Atlantis and the rest of everything after that. Uh, they're highly evolved, of course, uh, gifted healers. Uh, it says uh, they became volunteers during the sinking of Lemuria. People were given a choice to either become a volunteer to help raise human consciousness into higher states of awareness or to return to their own system or light source. So uh, they, some of them stayed, apparently, which we'll get to in just a sec, to Mount Shasta in just a moment. Uh, they speak Solara, Maru, and English, and I have no idea what that is. Is that, is that an, actual, uh, an actual language? Maybe. Uh, their mother tongue is the Lemurian language, but they also, also speak impeccable English with a slight British accent. Any of our British friends out, friends out there? Uh, they are graceful and tall. They are commonly described as graceful and tall, seven feet with long flowing hair. They dress in white robes and sandals, but they've also been seen in very colorful clothing. They are said to have long slender necks and bodies. Uh, they are masters of technology, electronics, and atomics. Uh, so the Lemurians supposedly have mastered atomic energy, telepathic and clairvoyant skills, electronics, and science as long as 18,000 years ago. They have technology that makes us surface dwellers look as toddlers compared to them. They control most of their technology with their mind. And this is from numerologist.com. Pretty good stuff. And uh, the, their longevity, this is describing the ultra-terrestrials that supposedly still live here on this planet. Uh, so the Lemurian physical body does not age thanks to advanced hydroponics technology which enables them to exist on a diet of living foods because of this many live for hundreds of years so there we go that's what we're talking about these individuals that are not again aliens they're more what what are basically known as the 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 beginning of civilization here on earth and so uh with, with some sort of cataclysm and war between lemuria and atlantis they're saying that uh, some of them volunteered to stay instead of return to their home dimension. So uh, there we go. There's, there's how this begins. Now let's go to the Shasta story. Now this is a little bit wild. All right. So a mysterious hole. This is from August 31st, 2018. And from kqed.org. Right? Not where you'd expect to find some woo-woo stuff, but well, here we are. All right. So a mysterious hole appeared on Mount Shasta. Each theory behind it tells a different story. This is pretty fascinating. Elijah Sullivan spent the last six years trying to solve a mystery. About 10 years ago, a hole about 60 feet deep appeared on the side of Mount Shasta, California's highest volcano. It seemed to have been dug by hand at night using a makeshift pulley system to remove the dirt. The only clues the diggers left behind were a ladder, some buckets, and a plastic water bottle. Sullivan grew up in Mount Shasta, a former logging town that lies at the base of the mountain. Most people, quote, most people knew me as the guy from the video store, says Sullivan, who works at an independent movie store in the city. If anybody's been up to that area, it's um, these these cities are incredibly small. And yeah, it's hard to not know who works at all the stores because, right, you'd see them because there's only a few stores. Uh, here we go. But he's even better known for his quest to solve the mystery of a giant hole for a documentary film he's making called The Hole Story. Everybody remember Mel's Hole from uh, old school Art Bell? <laughs> Mel's Hole. Here we go. We got a new mystery uh, called The Whole Story. Here we go. This is pretty nuts. Sullivan says he's been tracking three main theories about what someone was looking for at the bottom of this hole that they dug into Mount Shasta. And each theory tells a different story about the region's history. So the first, of course, the first, of course, 
the lost continents of Lemuria. And that's what we're talking about. So why would you look at Mount Shasta, you say? Why would you be digging a hole there, you say? Mike, what is all this about, you say? Don't worry, we're getting there. Some people in Mount Shasta believe that a lost continent called Lemuria is hidden beneath the mountain, along with its capital crystalline city, Telos, T-E-L-O-S, the city beneath the mountain. The name Lemuria originated from a 19th century zoologist who believed that lemurs had used the lost continent as a land bridge to migrate from India to Madagascar. All right. While some people think Lemuria exists only in the mind, and that's an interesting thing we'll talk about in just a sec as well, others say they've seen tall, robed Lemurians shopping in town or traveling in and out of the mountain in cloud-shaped UFOs. And those are those lenticular clouds I described. Uh, They seem to, again, cause this halo effect in these these clouds around Mount Shasta that can be be seen. And they, they say that... There are these UFOs that kind of zip in and out of these clouds, uh, kind of maybe going back into the mountain sort of thing. So, so anyway, here we go. So when Sullivan heard about the giant hole, his first thought was that the diggers were trying to get to the underground world, Telos, the capital city of ancient Lemuria, right? Or at least, well, where they've migrated to since Lemuria itself has uh, supposedly sunk into the ocean. He says, uh, quote, you'll hear a lot of people talking about Lemuria, maybe even asking for directions, says Sullivan. People make pilgrim- pilgrimages here. It's like a New Age Mecca. In 1987, an event called the Harmonic Convergence marked Mount, Mount Shasta as a destination for New Age spirituality. It was a huge production. One news report from the time called the gathering a spiritual Woodstock. But Mount Shasta has a spiritual reputation that long predates the New Age movement. Now, back to that, back to that idea that Lemuria itself only exists in the mind, in the mind's eye, in that memory that really doesn't even exist except through, again, Edgar, Edgar Casey and other mediums that have supposedly been able to channel these ultra terrestrials, these Lemurians that, or, or Atlanteans even, right? Because again, they were, they were similar civilizations in a similar time frame. And there are rumors, we'll get to this a little bit later, that there was a war between them, that that's actually what caused the cataclysm in both places. So, okay. So that's what's going on here. That's what we're talking about tonight. But consider the idea here that if we have, uh, let's say, a lost continent, the lost continent of Mu. And it, maybe it's not a physical place, right? Uh, people, people in the chat up there has said, uh, something about, you know, uh, underwater UFOs like USOs on, uh, you know, uh, unidentified submerged objects. Well, maybe, right? Uh, because think of it in terms of this. If we have that whole situation where we have, uh, aliens coming from who knows where in space, right? We've talked about how the speed of light is incredibly slow on a cosmic scale. Even though it's the speed of light is, damn, it's, it's as fast as you get, right? It's still cosmically slow to really travel or get, get, to get anywhere. So if that's the case, we've talked about the aliens sort of being this interdimensional kind of phase shifting something that maybe they live here on Earth with us and maybe they always have. And that's what we're seeing. We're seeing them kind of phase in and out of the, the transitionary thing between the fourth, uh, the fourth or fifth dimension, whatever is going on with this. And then, well, imagine if the, in the same vein, maybe Atlantis or the lost continent of Mu, Lemuria, as it's also known, is also still in existence somehow. It's just been locked down, meaning there's no portal There's no way for us to step into that other realm, realm, all right, that other dimension. And so, you know, science has clearly stated that, hey, this stuff is real. These other dimensions are mathematically not only feasible, they're probable. And so what does that mean with us sharing the same space with other entities that may dip in and out of our our collective areas here, our consciousness, our shared areas? And so what I mean by all of this is that idea that if it just exists in the mind and it's not a physical place, but a spiritual place, sort of like they say about heaven, right? And how dare me? I know 
I don't mean it like that. How about the Garden of Eden? Let's say that. All right, probably a little less polarizing. But let's say the Garden of Eden. Does it still exist? Did it ever exist? If it never did or did, was it a physical place? You see, I think, I think these ideas are a little bit larger than just anthropology or archaeology here. It's, uh, what does it mean? And how is it possible? Is all this possible? I don't know. What are your thoughts on this? Like I said, it's, it, it's a little bit strange in that once you go so far back, we've talked about this on the show with the mud floods and some of the other stuff that we did uh, that, you know, talking about ancient civilizations. When you go so far back, there's a point where uh, the, the earth will just erase any remnant of what was. We see this. It's going to happen to us eventually. Hopefully not, but it's going to happen to us, right? And so the thing is, well, what does all that mean? Do you think, like I said, is this too woo for you? Ha- having places that exist only in our mind or through some sort of uh, portal we can step through, some sort of dimensional shift? Is that too woo or is it not? Anyway, what are your thoughts? Have you heard of Lemuria? Have you heard of the lost continent of Mu? Have you heard of this Mount Shasta portal system where people make these spiritual pilgrimages? And not only that, how about have you heard of this guy that's been uh, investigating this hole? Somebody was digging a hole in the side of Mount Shasta about 18 years ago. And they were trying, what do you think they were trying to find? You think they were trying to find the, the, the lost city of Telos beneath the mountain? And if so, do you think you can find it by digging? That's the question. (laughs) Love to hear your thoughts. 702-957-1037. That's 702-957-1037. Kind of a long and winding story, this, you know? It starts way back. And again, you know, we're talking about ultra-terrestrials. We're talking about possibly a civilization that was here millions of years ago. And they say that some of them may be left, but maybe some stayed. And that's where this Mount Shasta bit comes in. Now, the story goes something like this. In some, the cataclysm happened, and they don't know if it was a war between Lemuria and Atlantis, and it ended up in the demise of both civilizations, or if it was they were separated by, like, say, a million years. Uh, Lemuria or Mu came first, Atlantis next, and maybe uh, just those long cycles of the Earth shifting and changing uh, destroyed them, moved them. But then again, what if they weren't physical places at all? There you go. There's where we're at tonight. But then once those things happened and they were no longer habitable for whatever reason, they say that Lemurians, the people who inhabited the very first civilization here on Earth, the ultra terrestrials, these shape-shifting ancients, I guess, they moved. They took refuge. They moved underneath the ground, into Agartha, right? Into this city named Telos, which is the capital city of the remnant of Lemuria. And of course, the entrance to that is in California, in Mount Shasta. And that's what we're talking about. So let's go a little bit more here. And the reason why it's not just sort of a more, more of a new age, kooky sort of interesting thing, kind of like we talked about with the dog man. We talk about Bigfoot. We talk about things like this on this show as well. It'd be one thing if it, like the skinwalker, for instance, if it was, as some suggest, uh, just a media concoction, right? They wrote a book in like 1992 or something, and then since then, skinwalkers have been all the rage, right? That'd be one thing, which some people claim that's, that's, the, that's, the, that's the thing. But, right, If you go to the native traditions, that's not true at all. So in the native traditions, they have these ideas that this the skinwalkers, just just for instance here, goes back hundreds or thousands of years. So, you know, the Shermans and the book in nineteen ninety two, the skinwalker, this, that, the other. My point is some some will say, Oh, it's a modern concoction for clicks and money, right? But then if you go to these native traditions, it doesn't play out in that manner. And we'll go to this. So the other reason he was looking at this hole. So first is people looking for the lost city of Telos. All right. Second, that uh, the mountain is sacred for this is Mount Shasta in Northern California. The mountain is sacred to the Winnie Mem Wintu tribe, which is indigenous to the McLeod River area of Northern California. Now, this is where it gets wild. Quote, we heard about the hole, said the tribe's leader. 
Carlin Sisk, who worries that spiritual and recreational visitors are harming Mount Shasta. We came out of that mountain, so we're ob- obligated to be the watchers of the mountain. That's why Sullivan's second theory about why someone dug a giant hole on Mount Shasta is that they were looking for Native American artifacts. All right. You see what the guy said, though? He said, we came out of that mountain like it was the birth, like there was some sort of maybe the Lemurians did bring us out, right? Maybe we are their descendants somehow. Maybe they're here to look after us. Who knows? There's a whole bunch of this. But again, a lot of this goes back to some of these native traditions, including that Mount Shasta is a sacred site. Meaning, of course, like we've talked about, maybe Stonehenge, things like this with these uh, maybe uh, ley line conjunctions, things like that. I don't know. So he says, uh, quote, there's a pretty long history of Native American artifact looting here, says Sullivan. It makes sense because so many tribes have been here over so many centuries. Okay, digging for artifacts, of course. Uh, Yeah, Uh, let's see. Hold on, hold on. Okay, anyway, just back to that. Back to that. Back to that idea. The tribe's leader says, We came out of that mountain, so we're obligated to be the watchers of the mountain. So what does that mean? Does that mean that the Lemurians, the lost city of Telos, there's something to this? Does it mean that ultra-terrestrials are here and have been here? And what does that mean about Agartha, Telos itself? What about Lemuria? What about all of this? I think, like I said... uh, Too many times, I think we get stuck in the trap of reading things and interpreting them in a literal fashion, all right? Including Atlantis, right? It's been been debunked. Atlantis was an allegory about, uh, I don't know, what, Pompeii or something, right? Something like this, they said. Something like that, or um, some other volcanic eruption that took out a, you know, a civilization. Something like that. Some kind of allegory. It's not literal. Homer, Homer writing about... No, it's not a thing, right? Science says no. Well, what if those places aren't physical places? What if those places are, you need uh, to, to kind of step through something, some sort of portal, some sort of gateway, some sort of, I don't know, meditation, conscious, I don't know, like I said. And so that's the question tonight. Is, is all this possible? Do you, are you buy any of this? And if you don't, that's okay. Is this too woo for you? Uh, what's up? Aaron says, Mount Shasta is a magical place. And that's, I think that's the thing. There's a whole lot of shenanigans that go down around Mount Shasta. Again, UFOs, these lenticular clouds, these, uh, they spot these little, little people, three foot, four foot tall people running around on the slopes of Mount Shasta in and around it. So th- there's a lot to this. We'll get to those. We'll get to those stories as well. But is this too much for you? Basically, that's the question tonight. Is this too much? Is this too woo? Or do you think that we're onto something? Do you think that maybe there is a sprinkle of truth somewhere in here and that maybe some of these places are, well, actually magical, actually mystical, actually something, something not physical? Do you think any of that's possible at all? And that's what's on my mind tonight. Love to hear your thoughts on this. I know that uh, this is probably one of those nights where it's going to be one of those, you know, folks are busy and doing their thing and Thanksgiving and all the things. Happy Thanksgiving, by the way. We made it another one, guys. Congratulations. And, uh, well, that's what's on my mind tonight. Is all of this real? Is all of this fake? Is it somewhere in between? And therein lies the conversation. Did ancient Lemuria retreat to a city called Telos? underneath Mount Shasta. And if they did, is it a physical place or is it a place through some portal to another dimension? Love to hear your thoughts. I have no idea. I wish I was the answers guy. I am only the questions guy. 702-957-1037. That's 702-957-1037. This is Trouble Vines. I'm Michael Strange. More Lemuria, Mount Shasta, Ultra Terrestrials, and you when we return. Be right back. Don't go anywhere. We 
we are talking about alien, the alien abduction phenomenon. The alien, the, alien, the, alien, the, alien. the aliens are, are looking through your eyes and they're accessing your optic nerve. Optic nerve. Optic nerve. Optic nerve. Optic nerve. And they also feel them planting or receiving memories or ideas or images. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday at 7 p.m. Pacific, and we talk about all the things we're not allowed to talk about, which of course are aliens, conspiracy, the paranormal, the government, academia, the 24-hour news cycle, propaganda, and the general feeling that we live in the upside down. And of course, being live, we're taking your phone calls as we stream on Rockfin, YouTube, DLive, and... Twitter. We're also broadcasting live on the Fringe FM. If you want to be part of the show tonight, we are talking about Lemuria, the lost continent of Mu. They say it predates Atlantis. They say that there are ultra terrestrials that have lived adjacent with us, possibly in another dimension. And they are still here. And since they lost their continent, they have retreated to a city named Telos that resides under Mount Shasta which is, of course, a mountain in Northern California, also known as a sacred place by Native Americans for hundreds or even thousands of years. And uh, all kinds of weird shenanigans happen around Mount Shasta, including UFOs, uh, including uh, they see uh, entities in white robes walking around down there. Uh, They see uh, short people, like not just, you know, like not like me, short people, like three foot tall individuals like brownies or sprites or leprechauns or something like this walking around uh, in and around Mount Shasta. There's some there's some pretty nutty stuff, pretty nutty stories that come from the locals that live around there. And it's become some sort of a uh, like a spiritual pilgrimage sort of destination. But of course, all of this goes back to the ancient continent of Lemuria and these ultra terrestrials that supposedly still live inside the mountain. So what do you know about this? What have you heard about this? And I'd love to hear your thoughts. If you want to be part of the show tonight, 702-957-1037. That's 702-957-1037. That's a Las Vegas area code. And you could, uh, if you're listening internationally, we have people that listen all over the world and don't like the American area code. Uh, We have a Discord. Go to troubledminds.org and click the Discord link and it's completely free chat client voice client and uh yeah it's hard to go wrong with discord so there you go uh love to hear your thoughts on this so that's what's on my mind tonight we're going to get back to this uh mount shasta the the ancient lemurians and some of the rest of this the 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 buried city of of uh, telos telos i'm sorry telos uh so let's uh let's do that but before we do that let's go to our good buddy robert robert in pennsylvania Welcome to the show, my friend. Happy Thanksgiving to you. How are you tonight? Happy Thanksgiving to you, and let's get this show rocking. Absolutely. All right, let's get this call. I'm priming the pump here. Let's do it. All right, for the first call, priming the pump. All right. Uh, And I'm going to put something across that no one's ever thought of about Lamora. Okay. All right. Lamora was the uh, was the first civilization. You know that 
on Earth that advanced, but advanced to such a point that it it, it uh, uh, projected itself into another dimension. All right, and this gets a little woo-woo. All right, but we are all Lamorans. Lam- Lamorn is what we call heaven, all right? When we, pe- we, we get to go back to Lamora when we die. That's what, it, you know, the Bible calls it heaven, but that's Lamora. And it, was, and it projected itself into, into a, a, a sixth or seventh dimension. Uh, and... Uh, uh, you know, I've been drinking a little maybe juice too, all right? But when you see, when you read the literature on near death experiences and what people speak of when they get to what they think is this heaven, it's like Dorothy and the, and her, her her friends approaching Oz, except it's a million times more 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 spectacular. And that's my thesis, is that the mora is where we go when we die. Okay, sort of like... And uh, we come back here. Okay. So, sort of like Valhalla, something like that, right? Where it, not, not quite heaven, it's a... Uh, so, so, so it is maybe... I don't know, how would you describe it? Like, so, so, so did it ever exist, I guess is the question. So, so you said it did, and it phased into another place, another dimension, another something. And it's, uh, so, so what would you call it? Like sort of a supernatural staging point for human souls, something like that? Sure. And, and, and if you look at where we're going right now, our, our, our own civilization, all right, we're getting closer and closer and closer to doing just the same thing. It may be, it's probably a few hundred years into the future, maybe a thousand. But our technology is moving us in that very direction where we, 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 we will be capable of projecting a whole continent into a seventh or eighth dimension, all right? Um, I don't want to call it virtual reality, but it's just, that's about, as far as the vocabulary goes, it's about the best I can do to describe that sort of thing. But I have thought for a long, long time, Lamora, heaven, Lamora, heaven, Lamora, heaven, it's, it, you know, what, what's in a name? <laughs> a, a rose still smells so sweet. Lamora is what, our, is what we, on this planet, have always talked about as heaven. And when you talk to people who, who go, manage to get there and come back, uh, and their descriptions, uh, that sounds to me just like uh, the depictions in the literature of what Lamora was like when it was on the earth. Okay, that makes sense. Uh, do, so what about uh, this whole, again, like I said, there, there's different stories here. Like, as always, you can chase down all the leads, and some say that Lemuria and uh, Atlantis were the yeah. same thing, just called different names. Some say that the, the two, that they're both ancient civilizations that went at war with each other and ended up wiping each other out, and so... The, their last remnants are left in places like underneath Mount Shasta, things like this. What do you think about that? Do you think that it, it, uh, there's something to that, or how, how come there's so many different stories here? Well, not not everybody wanted to project into the sixth, seventh dimension, uh, the higher dimension, okay? Uh, so there are refugees from the Mora that founded Atlantis. Okay, that makes sense. That makes sense. Who decide to stay here? Who decide to stay here at their doom? Because uh, Atlantis eventually uh, sank beneath the sea. Okay. All right. I, I, I dig it. I, I do like that. Uh, and, and go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. No. I, I so I do like I do that like there's, like that there's the the two different things here. That's you know in some concepts. 
these are real physical places. But then in others, like you said, maybe these have uh, kind of ascended, phased out of this dimension into some other thing. They've become something else. I, I kind of like the idea that maybe both of those are possible because, of course, they, they work hand in hand, don't they? Sure they do. Sure they do. And, and, and I, I, I think that, I think that the, the ones that were refugees from the war that, that, that created Atlantis, they, they were more not as spiritual. They are more materialistic in their approach. Um, they probably spawned the uh, Ekinaki or whatever they, I, I, I've never been able to pronounce that, uh, you know, that began the whole business of enslaving a, a, a bunch of other primitives and, and mining gold and that sort of stuff. That's, I'm just saying that the beginning, in the beginning, all right, when they talk about the Garden of Eden, in the beginning, there was Lamora, all right? The Garden of Eden happened after Lamora was projected itself into the sixth or seventh dimension. And the refugees from Lamora founded Atlantis, and that's where, they, you know, the Garden of Eden originates from, all right? Because they were doing biological experiments, genetics, and that sort of stuff there, all right, which was which would be considered criminal in the old Levant, uh, Lemurian continent. What they were doing was absolutely not kosher. And I'm just saying that you can tell there's two personalities here. All right? You had this, the highly spiritual Lemurians who projected into the sixth or seventh dimension, and you have the earth, earthly materialistic refugees who did things that they should not have been doing, and they, that, that's why, and, and and that's why they could not go project into that sixth or seventh dimension on their own, because they were too materialistic to do that. But when when they died, when those Atlanteans passed on, they went back to Lamora, because that's our heaven. That's. That's the legend. That that that's the myth. You know, if there's a heaven, it has to be, in my opinion, it has to be the old continent of Lamora that had projected into the sixth, seventh dimension. Okay, I like it. So it, it is interesting. So so I was tracking down some of the things, like I said, and there's so many different threads of where this comes from. It, it, it kind of dates back to Edward Casey, some of his channeling. I, I even found some that go back to like the Anunnaki, trying to link this to, to that story. So it, it is curious that uh, the threads are all over the place. And so it, it doesn't surprise me that uh, like, like sort of like, uh, like, like the, the native there said, we came from that mountain, that Mount Shasta, so we watch over this, right? So it's like sort of like birthed from the land or from these ancient continents as both physical places and spiritual places. I dig it, man. I dig it, man. So in the chat there, they're saying that uh, this is, uh, Advent says this is very parallel to the biblical war in heaven. Kind of sounds like it, doesn't it? Yes, and as a matter of fact, that, I was thinking of that, but I, I didn't know how to express that, um, you know, in, in a way that, that would make perfect sense. But the, um, there's one more point I have to make here, and I lost my train of thought. Um, I'm famous for that. No need, no need to, no need to be concerned. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, uh, the, the secret is you just have three or four trains of thoughts, and then they all kind of spurg out in bizarre ways. <laughs> that's that's the secret. <laughs> well, I, 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 my train of thought came back to me. All right, all right. Whenever you're going to uh, go back in time, but go back in history, you go back, you go back, you go back, go back. You go to, you, you need to go back to the start. And there's nothing in the literature that says Lamora suffered the same consequences as Atlantis. All right, Lamora just vanished. All right, um, some would say that it still exists as a, you know, in the Middle East or whatever. Um, but the society itself, like the Mayans, gone. No, there was no catastrophe. It just gone so and and that adds some weight 
to my theory that they were so advanced that they could project into the sixth or seventh dimension. All right, they were that highly spiritual, and they're the ones that we run into um, when it's time for us to cross over. So, one simple sentence: Heaven, Lamora, Heaven, Lamora. They when you when 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 both are described, you know, as paradise, whatever. It's it, you know, it's like twins. So it just makes sense to me that that's where we, that that it still exists, but it exists as our heaven, and that's where we go to, and that's where we reincarnate from, and and all those Atlanteans that were so bad, all right, have to reincarnate over and over and over again to get that materialistic uh, nature shed to build up their spirituality so they can go back and stay. And we are the Atlanteans. Gotcha. Every human being on the planet is from Atlantis. And almost, and the majority of people on this planet have materialistic instincts. All right? Yeah. That's, there's, there's very few that have uh, the, the high spirituality uh, that would be required to cross over back into what heaven Lamora and stay there, constant reincarnation until they're until they achieved enough that they could be forgiven of our sins. Gotcha. All right. All right. I dig it. Uh, th- thank you for that for the ideas here. Like I said, it, it is uh, interesting that uh, is it a physical place? Is it a spiritual place? Is it somewhere in between? Uh, kind of linking the two together. Uh, great call as always, Robert. You are the best. Uh, happy Thanksgiving to you and the family. Thank you for spending your time with us happy tonight. Happy Thanksgiving to you. Now I have to go to bed because I have to get up at five in the morning and help Mrs. Robert fix the turkey. If I'm not up at 5 a.m., Mrs. Robert is not going to be very happy with me. Okay, so, all right. So, good night, and uh, I'll catch the show uh, on the uh, replay. Okay, fantastic. Have a great night. Uh, thank you again so much for calling in. We'll, uh, we'll talk to you soon. Thank you very much. Okay, bye. Goodbye. All right, that's Robert, uh, and you can find his book. He's wrote a, he's written a book about uh, science fiction, about uh, consciousness, about all, all the things we talk about, basically. It's called The Robert Collection, Stories from a Fractured Mind. The link is in the description. Check it out. He, he hates it when I do that. He doesn't call for that reason, but uh, he did send me a copy of the book, and it's a very, very good book. Uh, so check it out. Check it out. I recommend it. Uh, all right, so uh, what we're doing tonight is we're talking about this ancient Lemuria. And what's up, Todd? Todd's in the chat says, uh, you know, uh, it's not, it's, it wasn't a real place and all the, all the, the rest of this stuff. And, and like I said, I'm, I'm open to all these ideas because who knows? Uh, and that's why I'm kind of uh, speaking in terms of what was this? Was ancient Lemuria actually uh, a, a place or is it just a concept in our mind? Uh, meaning uh, some sort of allegorical, um, like, like maybe Robert described, a Garden of Eden, maybe some sort of allegorical heaven or you know that spiritual staging point for human souls, something like this, right? Who knows? And I think uh, you know, no matter how you trace down these threads and find it, you, know, uh, you can find 100 websites and we'll say 100 different things about Lemuria in particular, but not just that, about everything. And that's why uh, these, these conversations have become more and more fascinating because you have these spiritual gurus that say, oh, this is the way that's the thing this is the you know the you know uh, I hate to call some names out but you guys know who i'm talking about you know uh, the answers people the people that have all the answers right those are the folks that uh, well they'll tell us exactly what this is all about and uh you know emphatically and you're wrong if you have an idea otherwise so pretty pretty nuts to me that uh that you can be so emphatic about some of these things that are from you know i don't know a million years ago pretty pretty nuts all right so uh what we're doing that's what we're doing today we're talking about uh, lemuria we're talking about these ancient civilizations we're talking about this place called telos it's a city underneath mount shasta as it were and uh, they say that the ancient lemurians escaped to this city uh, from the cataclysm from maybe uh, as robert described when lemuria itself phased into another uh, dimension uh, it was actually stated in one of those websites we were reading pre- previously that there were a group of lemurians that stayed behind to actually do um do uh, uh help humanity keep an eye on us watch over us 
things like this. So, so I have no idea. Uh, that's what we're doing. So we're still talking about this, taking your phone calls, 702-957-1037 at 702-957-1037. Let's go to our good buddy, Derek in Massachusetts, the Night Stalker. Welcome, my friend. How are you? Uh, we got about four minutes or so. So you're welcome. I, I know you got a little extra time. So you're welcome to stay yeah. past the break if you want to do that and chow down some food in between. Completely up to you, but go right oh. ahead. What's on your mind tonight, my man? Perfect. Uh, well, great show. Great show tonight. This is a awesome, awesome topic. This is the right, uh, flavor of maybe juice. And I just don't be worried about the calls. It's just because this is a, a holiday and people are probably, uh, yeah, yeah. probably boozing up right now. No sweat. But no sweat. Go right ahead. Really, really awesome stuff. Thank you. Um, oh, I'm working. So you might have to like, uh, as you were like giving these questions, like kind of prompting the questions, I had a thought for each of them. So you might need to prompt me a little bit, Sure. but, um, like my first thought was this week I watched, um, the Fantastic Four reboot, the one from a few, the most recent one with uh, Michael B. Jordan and stuff, and it's it's like probably known as one of the worst superhero movies. But it, as like a fan of this weird maybe juice stuff, it's pretty cool. Like the whole idea of it, instead of going into space and getting like struck by these like cosmic rays that give him their powers, they actually developed um, like a bridge, a gate to get him to the other side, to get him to it's like a portal to send him to another dimension. And like they didn't, they didn't. They were all kind of looking forward. They were all all these like geniuses, Doctor Doom and Free Richard and stuff. They were all kind of coming to the same conclusion that there's kind of the place that you can get to through these doors, you know. And then when they got there, Doom kind of gets his powers by this like green energy, which reminds me a lot of like real energy and the, and like what the Zool and like the fictional like real society were doing. The idea that there's like Hyperborea or these these places inside the Earth that have these um advanced technology or these like an element that like will give humanity a lot of power you know like real real power so all across the world there's stories of people trying to get like the, 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 the nazis and the Thule side they're all about getting to like the hollow earth and getting in the ground but my my personal opinion of it is that they're they're opening portals it's not there might be caves that like or like places you have to walk down but like, it might look like a cave. Like if you're an ancient who isn't um, hip to the idea of like dimensional doorways, it might even seem like you're just walking into a cave until you walk out the other side and it's this Agartha, this Shambhala, this crazy um, shining crystal city, you know? And it, it might seem to you like you walked down the cave into the earth and it's, so it's inside the earth and the theories will come up around that. But I think there's probably like quantum tunnels and stuff or bridges or doors inside like naturally existing inside the earth you know so when you're going through these places i don't know if like all these cities like these different versions of the hollow earth are all different places or like there are so like capital city or major city or different locations inside the i don't know if that's true or not but i do like the idea that portals can go to different locations different locations so it, uh, all these potentially different inner earth species might actually be all actual species that are communicating us somewhere rather than like potentially just different civilizations kind of twisting um, what they're seeing, like these ultra terrestrials, these something that's not exactly like maybe not even physical, just something that's interacting with us and it's getting uh, kind of shot through different prisms all around the world, but they all kind of have a similar idea. But there's something that you kind of like follow down or like it will lead you somewhere or you can go and like try to try to go after it inside the earth or like through somewhere to the other side in some capacity and then once you get over there it's like beyond amazing advanced technology crazy resources uh got yeah we're running out of time so i'll, I'll let you uh all right so you're gonna, you're gonna hang out for the break or are you done I'll, st- I'll stick around here okay stay right there mute up i'll come back and get you in a sec this is Trouble Minds. Right. I'm Michael Strange. We're here with Derek of Mass- in Massachusetts, the Night Stalker. We're talking about Lemuria tonight. Don't go anywhere. More Trouble Minds coming up. Be right back. Welcome back to Troubled Minds. I'm your host, Michael Strange, and we are streaming on Rockfin, YouTube, DLive, and Twitter. And of course, we are broadcasting live on the Fringe FM. 
And tonight, we're talking about Lemuria, the ancient civilization they say was contemporary to Atlantis, or even predating Atlantis. What is this about? Was it a real place? Is it a spiritual place? Is it mythology? Is it just a figment of our imaginations love to hear your thoughts on this 702-957-1037 that's 702-957-1037 and uh, we'll put you on the show easy as that but let's get back to our good friend derek in massachusetts the night stalker welcome brother are you there i'm here i'm here welcome back all right so you had some pretty good ideas there regarding uh not just uh Lemuria, these these areas where you can kind of pass into this Agartha sort of situation with a advanced technology, but you walk into this cave and maybe you come out of the other end and you may, you you realize or you don't you may not realize that you phased into another reality, another dimension, and so this maybe a place like Agartha or a place like this city Telos that's uh, supposedly under Mount Shasta, they aren't physical places at least in our realm. So uh, g- great thoughts there, but uh, continue. I'm sure you got some more good stuff yeah. here um yeah exactly they they might be physical places like they might they might just be like quantum tunnels to actual physical locations but there's also the strong chance there's they're more ethereal they could be on higher or lower dimensions other realms like that that might seem different than ours um you mentioned the upside down during the break and that's another example of this weird realm this weird place that like in that show, like the military, like the Department of Energy, you're trying to get to because it, there's some kind of energy source that they're trying to get over there, and it's and it's physical and kind of weird and metaphysical and ethereal too. It's the same. It's kind of a fusion of of both. You know, there's kind of both things happening at once. Um, but to like get to track back to like the beginning, as far as like what is Lemur in Atlantis, um, Rivers pointed this out, and it's I, I agree completely that um. I don't visualize, I could be, I could be wrong, obviously, but I don't visualize Atlantis as being an actual island in the same with Lemuria. I consider them to be like a, a, the name for, that we give the global um, maritime civilization that existed during that, during that period. So let's say somebody discovered our world, like, let's say a giant asteroid hit us tomorrow, knock on wood, and destroyed everything, and then 5,000 years from now, they they find like the Statue of Liberty, or they find some kind of crazy, like, they find all kind of crazy stuff from, from our from us. They might label this entire age right now, our entire world right now. They might label it New York, you know. But that's not a full description descriptor of what's actually happening. And so, when the idea of Atlantis sinking, I don't subscribe to the idea that it actually did sink. So when people are trying to find these like um, places that might be like the sunken island of Atlantis, that's not really my bag i think it's more like there could be cities from atlantis or during that time period but it's more describing the age and rivers uh i always ask her when we get to this these like weird stuff she's uh she's real gifted when it comes to these kind of um picking up these metaphysical stuff you know so in, in her in her opinion that it it uh ended or existed around like fifty thousand years ago which kind of jives with like the graham hancock idea if there was an atlantis society more recently like around like 36,000 years ago or, or like even closer, like around 12,000 years ago, you know? And then they were a more spiritual, um, like culture than Atlantis, which Robert also said, uh, which is cool. Um, which kind of, if like you kind of track in these ages, it doesn't bode well from us. If we're getting less spiritual, if Lemuria was super spiritual, Atlantis was less. So abusing technology and then look at us, look what we're doing. We're, trying to bust into that, to that other side too. We're trying, we're trying to, we're trying to open the door with these Hadron colliders and all kinds of stuff. So I don't know. I have a, uh, one quote that I want to read that she, she gave to, uh, kind of describe it, um, about these ages. One second. Sorry. Um, the wheel of time turns and ages come and pass, leaving memories that become legend, legend fades to myth. And even myth is a long forgotten when that age, it, uh, it birth. And even myth is long forgotten when the age that gave it birth comes again. So it almost reminds me of like, so that's from the wheel of time. So there's like these kind of the sine wave of the aeons, the way these yugas kind of cycle through, the way these ages kind of cycle through, that it's almost repeating itself, you know? And it reminds me a lot of like the matrix idea and that there's like, that we kind of come from this older age or we come from this older matrix, come from this older simulation and we're birthed from it, which is in all kinds of mythologies like, uh, Mithras, uh, Mithraism and all kinds of stuff like you, your birth from from the previous age, you know. And the name Talos means. Uh, sorry, I wrote the density. Let me find that. 
the, like the the ultimate goal or something like that the ultimate goal so this, this is just a thought that came to me when you were talking i never really put this together but what if like when you were describing ultra terrestrials you were right to call like a previous society like older than us would be ultra terrestrials but what, when i say that i'm usually visualizing like some kind of non-physical entity more so than than anything that's like living on earth um for longer than us which even though they both fit so perhaps it's both where there's this non-physical entity this like kind of not trickster type 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 entity but this kind of guiding hand type entity that existed on this planet forever in some capacity whether physical or non-physical or both and then they're the ones that are kind of like prodding at us to create technology so kind of the through line between all these different mythologies that are looking for this agartha or looking for this hyperborea or looking for this frill society they're trying to find the substance the resource that that society has that gives them the ability to become atlantis or to become this to dominate the planet and become this advanced civilization so what if that's what they're doing the ultra terrestrials are actually trying to coax us through channeling with the air casing and stuff there's all kinds of ultra terrestrial channeling threads as far as them acquiring this weird information that leads them to this outcome of like creating new technology or creating a new paradigm that then leads them to a more technological society you know what if they're doing that leading us to a physical place or ethereal place or whatever a location that has some type of resource and this is a slight spoiler for godzilla vs kong but they spent a lot of money depicting the hollow earth in that movie like it was like half the movie or maybe less less than half but a good chunk of the movie took place in the hollow earth and like there's all cgi like it's they must i don't know there's a, a lot of effort went into them showing us the hollow earth and when he got in there there was this blue type of rock energy that apparently kong's ancestors used to like dominate the hollow earth but that's the same thing it's that's the real energy that's this substance this resource that allows us to, to become this higher advanced atlantean civilization i don't know and i think that's that could be what's happening is this something outside of time is trying to guide us um and it's happening through the ages and they're not they might not be getting what they need like i think the goal is to collapse reality collapse the pillars of reality to separate the realms so that lovecraftian old ones all the everything from every realm merges and merges together and i think they've been trying to do that for a long time and and atlantis and these different advanced civilization like civilizations that have this advanced technology were trying to do this and it it like kind of backfired and their civilization ended and now the wheel of time keeps cycling around now we're, we're in our version of it where we have these mad scientists trying to do all kinds of stuff that's gonna potentially lead to our destruction you know um i'm rambling but as far as mountain shafts is concerned nobody mentions the fact that they're the also, the Shasta River that runs along it too, and the fact that I don't know. I feel like part of me is almost some, feels like sometimes they they almost ignore rivers on purpose, like uh, the not the person, the the water, like and they they give the mountains all the credit as being the being the home of the gods. But maybe they're coming out of these like portal. I don't know. It leads me to believe that there is some kind of portal uh, on Mount Shasta, you know. But also the fact that everybody knows. Mount Shasta, like when you're trying to explain some kind of portal area to somebody who doesn't really understand the idea, Shasta is one of the first things that you bring up as these as these um these hot spots, you know. So why do we know that? Is it maybe there's some kind of like underground military thing or underground with our elites doing weird stuff, and they've created the narrative to make us think, no, 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 that's just these crazy, I don't know, these you're seeing these crazy tall people in robes, and I don't know, like I don't know. I'm rambling. Save me. Save me here. I'm losing. <laughs> I got you. No, I got you. Uh, just real quick uh, to to so t- telos telos is a a term used by philosopher Aristotle to refer to the full potential or inherent purpose or objective of a person or a thing, and I think that's yeah. pretty curious here that uh, it, it does kind of really line up with everything we're talking about. So we're we're talking yeah. about the potentiality of. Well, a species of, of you know, uh, the interdimensionality of, you know, ascension even, right? Like, what does this mean? We're talking about heaven and hell all in the same thing. But we're, you know, we're talking about a place, whether this place is real yeah. or not. It, it's, I mean, it's, a, it's a lot. Like, it's, it's a pretty big concept. That's it is I mean. a lot. It is a lot. Yeah. This, this, is a, this is a new, I've been on the, is something giving us technology and, and, and putting us towards something 
um, potentially not good for, for maybe like a year or two now. Um, but this idea that I'm talking about right now, as far as it's like Vril and what if, what if they're guiding us to something in the hollow earth or some kind of weird other realm is new just from listening to your show right now. And so as you're saying that, um, Oh damn! What did you what did, what did you what did you just say before I interrupted you? So, sorry, sorry. I had I, I had something said? good. So it was a, a term. Uh, Telos is a term used by philosopher Aristotle to refer to the full potential or inherent purpose. Oh yeah, okay, I got that. Object got it. or a person. All right, so thing. Go ahead. Sorry, sorry. You're yeah, good. the full potential. So I'm visualizing it almost like uh, like a carrot in front of like in front of a society. So giving us or give, in giving if they're interacting with people all over the world, giving everyone some kind of utopian society to look, to look for. And even a physical, and even like some kind of crazy treasure hunt, scavenger hunt to go actually find them, but giving them some kind of weird new age, spiritual tech, techno society that could, that I don't know, to, to work for if, if they want that to, to be the goal, if it is like the, the ultimate goal, whose ultimate goal, our ultimate goal, like a society in general, if it is the ultimate goal of society, why aren't they here anymore? You know, like what, like what really happened? So whose goal is it? Is it the goal of the ultra terrestrials? Like, are they trying to, can they not influence humanity? Like just because people are seeing these weird creatures and stuff at Mount Shasta doesn't mean that these creatures are what they're seeing. Like our mind, we know that is malleable. These ultra terrestrials, they, they project things in our mind or they can appear to us any way they want to. So could maybe they're not physical. We said this, a, we said this a dozen times on, on your show. Maybe they're not physical and they're trying to give us ideas to bring us to an end point, that ultimate goal, that Talos um, society. Uh, I don't know. Uh, maybe to our detriment, maybe, maybe, to, maybe again, maybe it takes a certain level of society, a level of technology to collapse the pills of reality to bring in these, these old ones, you know? It's a trap. Maybe, maybe it takes. It's I don't know. Trap. That's a lot. <laughs> it is a lot. Are you following? Kind of say? Yeah. Does that make sense, or am I yeah. just? Uh, no, I got at work and I'm all riled up. All right. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that, that too. You're, you're always riled <laughs> that up. That too. Yeah. yeah. Always riled up. Uh, great stuff as always, man. We got Jennifer behind you. We're going to go. Uh, oh, oh, great. Ha- happy Thanksgiving to you, my friend. Thank you for calling. Thanks for listening. Uh, you're going to be on tomorrow. We'll catch you probably tomorrow. I'll be on tomorrow. I'm getting out early tonight too. So anybody who's uh, hanging out in the uh, Discord chat, I'll be I'll be uh, around tonight. Okay. Perfect. Catch you then, Tomorrow's Derek. Maybe. Go ahead. All right. Later, brother. Great show. Thanks, thanks a lot, man. Appreciate it. Uh, there you go. Derek in uh, Massachusetts, the Night Stalker. Uh, do give him a follow. He's got a YouTube channel, uh, just a trailer, really. Uh, let's inspire him and follow him and give him a, a, some reasons to go make some YouTube stuff. Uh, do, do give him some love. Very, very brilliant stuff from Derek, as, as usual. Uh, right right on par with uh, his normal normal performance there. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to keep on talking. This is Lemuria and uh, Telos and all the rest of this. What does it mean, the potentiality of uh, a species? Uh, we're, we've kind of got into the woo-woo is this too woo for you? We'll see. Let's go to uh, our good friend. Uh, we're taking your phone calls, by the way, 702-957-1037. That's 702-957-1037. Let's go to our good friend, Jennifer, in Missouri. Thank you for being patient, Jennifer. Welcome to the show. How are you tonight? Hey, it's good. It's very raining, so it's raining on Thanksgiving. Nice. <laughs> we'll go with that. Nice. But um, I don't know. The great phone calls, and uh, I guess I'm a, I, I have the thought maybe – with Lemuria and this lost continent thing, what if there's something to do with, um, and the species idea, you know, we have all of these underwater, this is about the only thought I came up with. I mean, there's tons of other thoughts about like uh, continental drift and that the continent drifted off somewhere or, you know, it goes on and on or that they went underground, all of that. I wanted to speculate about something completely different. Maybe, um, maybe if they were, you know, they have the uh, mythology about the Selkie, and mermaids and uh, all the different talk about these water dwelling human like beings. And I mean, that's, it's kind of thick, but what if there was, you know, if you look at the um, underwater ruins that they have, these huge pyramids and columns and everything, what if that wasn't above ground at any point? What if it was always at the bottom of the ocean? And what if this was some kind of like species? I looked at, some things about the Lumerian people and they describe them as you were describing them. And then there are other books too, that talk about the possibility that they had gills and that they may have been able to go like up on land, but they could also go underwater. Some of them could have just been, what if they were aquatic? You know, Uh you have all the mythology about Poseidon and you have um, just 
just all these talks about um, aquatic kingdoms, kind of. Um, it's not just the, well, you have Aquaman and all that, but like with the mythologies of Poseidon and Mer people and the Selkies, every tradition, basically. Like India has it, kind of drifts into the Naga thing a little bit too. You know, one of the Mayan pyramids, um, I guess it used to be full of water. Like there were like almost like a labyrinth and it went underneath to water. What if they were somewhat aquatic and they had like underwater kingdoms and, you know, were maybe able to enter and Shasta too. She has like a huge body of water there. I think like a lake. That's lake it. Shasta. I'm thinking of something different. It sure does. No, Lake Shasta sure I don't does. Know. Yep. No, I, but, I, I, um, I like the know, idea. Go ahead. Go ahead. Um, underwater caves, you know, there's these massive underwater caves that could enter into a uh, way into Agartha. Maybe these were some kind of aquatic people who were once around and people were aware of them or they were like water world type people who were, I don't know, maybe going kind of living in between the worlds, like on the surface. And, and there's also talk about um, aquatic evolution too. Or they take that kind of path with the evolution of a human being. But at one point, we may have come out of the water. So maybe there's something to that. And if you go back that far, you know, you're talking, well, it, some people say it's more current. And maybe that's the case. But then you also have the possibility that it was really long time ago, you know, at the, at the earliest dawn of man, like you're saying. Maybe at that time, in the earliest dawn of man, people were um, coming out of water or something. I don't know. Because you have that kind of, there's that take on it, that there could have been some kind of evolving out of the oceans or something. You also have it, I mean, there's lots of things that could lend to it. <clears throat> maybe, that's, maybe that's something to consider, too. Yeah, it makes Possibly. sense, makes sense of- to me. So, so if you're thinking in terms of like uh, Atlantis or whatnot, and there was a civilization that was kind of bringing, let's say bringing gifts to an ancient civilization, and they came from, you know, a, very, and very much the, the flat earth style, right? Where, where if you've sailed too far, you would fall off the edge of the earth type of thing, right? Is, is uh, if, if you assumed that was the case and just the very old school thinking here, uh, you would... Uh, it, it would make sense that there was an aquatic civilization instead because when you went out there and expected, well, the Atlanteans should be here, but there's no continent, right? Well, it, there you go. There's there, That ties all of that together because they're still there. They're just, right? They're hiding. They're underwater in those caves. As as uh, humanity becomes more and more monstrous with you know splitting the atom and all the rest of this, you would expect them to probably retreat, right? Back off. Not saying hi to people on the boat but with the stories of the sirens and the mermen and the mermaids, like you said. There, who knows? The Poseidon stuff. There's a ton of stuff with... Uh, yeah. With uh, uh, is it uh, well, UFOs coming out of the ocean? Yes, exactly. We talked that about too. that the, that the UFOs going over the water. So yeah, maybe they were somewhat aquatic, or were living under on the ocean floors, or in these cities that the they have these amazing ruins that people think were just it was dumping sites. But in some cases, it's kind of impossible. But you know, it could be that it was just land dropping off. But maybe they never did. Maybe it was always there, and it's the remnants of its underwater. <laughs> species of people <laughs> I don't know, but, but you know there's always a there's always the possibility that there's the these enormous i think under antarctica too there are heated underwater caverns that they say are like underwater caves under antarctica that are almost like subtropical warm water and you can only enter them though if you were going deep under and into an underwater cave which is really and but you also have oxygen pockets but that would be toxic air but i mean I don't know. Maybe they are entering through, um, maybe they're somewhat aquatic, you know, and maybe humanity did evolve to be, um, uh, I mean, there's still similarities that how humans are kind of similar, you know, have, a, I don't know, but you never know. Could be something to do with an aquatic species of human that were maybe, I don't know. It seems kind of far fetched, but maybe you never know. Hey, maybe it's good enough for me. <laughs> Douse me in maybe juice and call me, call me, uh, <laughs> yeah, give it the thumbs up for sure. Yeah, yeah, I think, uh, I think that's why we do this, right? Because, uh, like Derek was saying, it, it's, it's the same thing with me when I'm speaking, right? 
like things kind of click into my mind that I hadn't even considered. And I spent some time, you know, at least a couple few hours thinking about the things I'm going to talk about before I talk about it. And so I think that I've got it all covered, right? But then you guys call and blow my brain up every night. And those things, when you start thinking for your, you know, hearing other people speak too, it's like, oh yeah, yeah, that, that, this, the other thing, right? I've missed it all, right? <laughs> you guys are just bringing it up too and going, oh, by the way, one of the well, most... Well, that made me think about it because I've always... Yeah, I've always thought of it being just like a continental drift thing, and it was ancient. You know, there was the continental drift, and the old Earth was called Ur, and then you have Lemuria, which means like, maybe it was like the people of Ur, like the, the first Earth before it split up the continents, and we have the Gondwana and um, Pangaea and all that. And I just wondered if maybe that was that civilization, and that was that works too. So there's several different things it could be, or it could be really far out there, because, I mean, the mythologies about these, at Poseidon, which I don't know, that kind of represents just like the, how the ocean is, you know, one of the most powerful things on the planet. But, but I don't know. It, it, if you think about the under the hollow earth theory and the underwater caves and the bottom of the floor of the ocean, how it's unexplored and everything, there may be something to it. And then the people always seeing the Navy, you know, seeing them get, coming and going from the water. And it just could, there could be something to it. There was a civilization that either was living permanently under, I just, I find that very hard to believe that they could breathe, that there would be a species that could, of human that would be breathing water (laughs) or be, but you just, you know, if you're going to, when you're thinking about these kind of topics, you have to kind of, I don't know. Suspend your disbelief for a moment, (laughs) which is okay. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, which is. (laughs) <laughs> totally okay. Totally. All okay. right. Great well, stuff I'll as talk always. To you later. Great Happy stuff holidays, as always. You guys. Thank you. You too. Happy Thanksgiving to you and the family. Have a good thank time. you. Thank you so much for calling. You too. You as well. Thank you. Thank you. There you go. If, uh, you, you, uh, again, uh, please give Jennifer a follow. She's got a YouTube channel. Link is in the description. Always great stuff. Uh, like I said, the embarrassment and riches of this show is you. Is all the amazing callers, and you see you see what I mean by that because well, we've got amazing callers that call into the show. So so please give them some love. If you scroll down, all the links of the folks who called in tonight: Robert Nightstalker. Uh, uh, Jennifer here. Uh, who else do we miss? Anybody else? The links are down below of the folks that you typically call into the show, and uh, you can give them a follow. I would appreciate that very much. Let's spread some love. And uh, a lot of a lot of good ideas flowing. And that's what this is about, right? It's about getting together and, and taking that moment to suspend your disbelief and consider all the things. And uh, that's what we're doing. So so as we as we finish up tonight, I don't know. There, there are no answers here. Like I always say, if you're looking for answers, you're in the wrong place. Because I don't think there are any answers, there are any answers here. I think instead, uh, some of the questions are, uh, you know, getting us closer to what may be an answer. And I think that's the important part. It's asking some questions. And, you know, we, we do our best. We're only human. And uh, as you can tell, uh, we, we're, we range far and wide. Tonight, Lemuria. I don't know. You tell me. I don't have an answer. And, well... <laughs> Uh, I'll, I'll tell you why. Peter, hang around. I'll tell you why we fixate on water or why it's possible that we should. We'll continue trucking. If you're listening to us on The Fringe FM, stay tuned for Joe Roop lighting the void. If you're listening to us on any other platform, including the podcast feed, stay tuned for a third hour of Troubled Minds. We're still taking your phone calls, still talking about Lemuria, these ancient civilizations, maybe these water portals, and Mount Shasta. So, as we finish, be sure... Be strong, be true. Thank you for listening. From our troubled minds to yours, have a great night. love it when it ends the station ID ends at the very very end there and it like literally clicks like 58, 59 top of the hour 
Leave the radio station. Perfect timing. All right, this is the deal. We're still talking about Lemuria. We're going to go do a third hour of Trouble Minds. We're still taking your phone calls. There's more to get to here. We're talking about Telos, Telos. We're talking about Mount Shasta. We're talking about portals, underwater civilizations, Lemuria, Atlantis. What is all of this about? Is it, again, a figment of our imagination? Is it some sort of interdimensional ascension thing? Is it aliens? Is it, well, you tell me. Basically, that's what's going on here. I have no idea. I wish I had answers, and I don't. I only have questions. And the more I think about it, the more I listen to you guys call in and say amazing things, the more questions I have. And, of course, well, I think that's what makes a good conversation. So we're going to keep on doing that, keep on trucking. So more Troubled Minds coming up. One more hour of Troubled Minds. And don't forget, we will be on the air tomorrow night. We'll be the only game in town on Thanksgiving, probably. So if you're uh, stuck home for whatever reason, come uh, join it with us. Come hang out with us for uh, Thanksgiving. But for right now, two-minute break, two-minute break. More Trouble Minds coming up. Don't go anywhere. Still taking your phone calls, 702-957-1037. Beat right back. More Trouble Minds on the way. All right, welcome back to Troubled Minds. I'm your host, Michael Strange, and we are streaming on Rockfin, DLive, YouTube, and Twitter, and we're taking your phone calls tonight, as this is the third hour. We are now off the fringe, and uh, which means you know we can let a F-bomb slide here or there. So if you've are you got a potty mouth and you're trying to avoid that the first couple hours for that reason, well, we're free and clear. Just a couple things, of course, uh, regarding uh, this, uh, the social media and YouTube and all the rest of that. Uh, try and keep the... Uh, the the conversations about the, you know, the <clears throat> pandemic uh, to a minimum because uh, it gets you, gets you flagged for talking about crazy stuff, right? You know what I mean? Wink, wink, crazy stuff. So there you go. Just, uh, just uh, you know, they're watching. They're listening. So, yeah, uh, you'll get put on a list, I'm pretty sure, which you probably already are just for listening to the show. But, uh, you know, you don't want to be on as many lists as possible. It's not like, a, you know, one of those those uh the, what do you call them the, the good life goals or whatever you're good you're good peter you're good just saying i just saying if you call in you're good in the chat but just saying if you call in so anyway so uh i got rohan here we're gonna go to you rohan hang tight gonna go to matt real quick first he's he just beat you in there as far as i saw we're gonna go to matt in california then we got rohan on deck we're talking about lemuria tonight we're considering all the possibilities here is this stuff real is it real uh, regarding uh, maybe Atlantis, Lemuria, this whole thing? Talking about Telos, or Talos, however you want to say, T-E-L-O-S, in uh, Mount Shasta. And, of course, what that name means is is uh, this. Uh, 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 telos is a term used by philosopher Aristotle to refer to the full potential or inherent purpose or objective of a person or a thing. And so it kind of makes me believe that this idea of this underground city in Mount Shasta, Telos, Telos as it were, however you want to, I don't know exactly how to say it, but T-E-L-O-S, that if that is the idea here, it seems like it's more of a spiritual idea than a place. And so we're talking about portals and water and all kinds of stuff. As usual, blowing my brain up. You guys are amazing. 702-957-1037. Let's go to Matt in California. Welcome to the show, my friend. Happy Thanksgiving. How are you tonight? Hey, Mike, how's it going? Ah, doing good. You're living the dream, man. Yeah. Ta- talking good weird job. shit <laughs> when the moon is out. <laughs> What's on your <laughs> mind, my man? Uh, just talking about Lemuria tonight, looking it up in this book. Uh, it's a mystical encyclopedia of mystical and paranormals. And uh, Lemuria is in here. So I'm kind of learning about it, too. Um, but I just want to say, you know, I think I believe that, you know, the Earth is alive. The Earth is constantly moving, shaping, shifting and all that. Uh, you look at Pangea and how it's moved to now. Um, and so I think, you know, you, when we talk about ancient civilizations, uh, we talked before about Tartaria, which has some crazy stuff. And, you know, we don't have much evidence of it because it was buried, it was killed, buried by a mudslide. And then we have Atlantis sank into the ocean. And then here we have Lemuria was destroyed by a volcano. So I think, um, you know, there might have been civilizations way, way, way before. We don't have any evidence of it. So we're kind of just piecing together the puzzle, you know, of, of everything. Uh, but, yeah, I think there was these uh, ancient, you know, these ancient societies existed. And uh, they're just 
the survivors of the aftermath of what happened to their colony, they have passed down some of their treasures or artifacts. And that's, you know, where they, you know, a lot of these artifacts are coming from, um, like the Mayans, the Egyptians, the Greeks, and then, um, the Native Americans, maybe they had some sort of, you know, passed down knowledge of this, but we're just kind of guessing because all the, a lot of the stuff was destroyed. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I just think that, yeah, go ahead. No, well, I, I think I think that's part of it too. Is this, uh, those 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 the big cycles, right? And so, kind of like you're describing, like the the Earth is its own self sustaining organism. It's alive. The, the Gaia hypothesis, right? And meaning that uh, mm-hmm. it, it's kind of eating up these old civilizations anyway. You can only trace back so far before the Earth gobbles up evidence of whatever, right? And that and that's part of the strangeness here is that. It, are we again? Is this a real place? What do you think? What does your your book there say regarding these places? Were they real places, or are they actually um, not? Maybe they're they're uh, you know like spiritual places. Back back to that ascension, the term telos right means the, the full potential or inherent purpose or objective of a person or a thing. It, it does seem like more of a spiritual thing. You know what I mean? No, yeah, I believe there are real places. Um, just like I said, history has destroyed it, and you know we don't have any evidence. But um, I like um, Robert's theory of these people. They were so advanced; they um, vibrated at a higher frequency, and they moved on to like a you know a different realm or like a higher consciousness. And that's why we can't see them. And I believe that's kind of like you think about what happened to the Mayans. They said the Mayans just like disappeared off the face of the earth. And I'm wondering that, too, is if they found some sort of knowledge that, you know, raises their vibration to a higher consciousness, and that's, they're just, they're not here, they're on a different vibrational frequency, so that'd be like your heaven. I like this theory, that was pretty good. Yeah, pretty good stuff. Uh, I, I like that, uh, especially, too, like the ultra-terrestrials, and again, if, if, if they did go kind of retreat after this, whatever this cataclysm was, think of it this way, right? I've heard this before, the term of a psychic nuclear bomb. Right. What if there was like this? Uh, it was like an ascension. These these old ancient Lemurians, right, were not necessarily um, like attacked by something physical, but it was by some sort of a psychic attack that ran them out of that uh, that 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 point of ascension that they reached. That uh, that pinnacle of whatever it was that they said that the, the Shangri La that was these uh, amazing civilizations of Atlantis and uh, uh, and uh, Lemuria. What, what if there was some sort of like like dimensional attack, right? That kind of made them retreat uh, to to this underground uh, portal there uh, in Mount Shasta. I don't know. I, I just thrown some ideas out here, kind of as ideas come, right? You're, you're, you're talking to people, having conversations. Yeah. You're like, yeah, what the hell? I don't know, man. Pretty wild stuff. So okay, so if they were real places, yeah, maybe. Go ahead, go ahead. No, you go ahead. You first. I was just say um, maybe that's where like they ended up was in the, in Mount Shasta, the survivors and they're still alive. Under yeah. The mountain. Yeah. That's how the story goes. So they say that, uh, whatever cataclysm happened for Lemuria, they ended up sent, uh, some of them retreated back to their dimensional home in some state here as volunteers <laughs> to go live in at Telos at Mount Shasta to uh, watch over humanity, to be kind of our shepherds sort of thing. That's good. Yeah. Good, good, um, good I wanted to read this, part, read this part of the book. Uh, I, th- I think this is kind of interesting, um, the guy's name. <clears throat> so in, uh, it says, uh, in 1870, Colonel James Churchward, um, he's like a big game hunter. Uh, he learned about the lost continent of Mu, uh, and he learned it from these um, ancient clay stone tablets hidden in India that were revealed to him by a Hindu priest. Uh, he said human beings appeared on Mu, some 200,000 years ago, um, evolving into an advanced race of over 60 million people and 10 tribes. About 12,000 years ago, a massive volcanic eruption, earthquakes, and tidal waves destroyed the entire continent. Survivors escaped to other lands. But I think that was, that's kind of interesting, that how, like how long ago that was. Because I think Atlantis was... Um, 19,000 years ago. So they're kind of around the same time period. But I think Lumeria was first because they talk about Lumeria being um, like the original Garden of Eden. 
Yeah, and I, I think that's the, the part that's kind of, they, they try and equate these disasters to the flood, right? 10, 12, 15,000 years ago. So, yeah, I don't know. I, I'm with you. Uh, it, it's hard it's hard to really say, right? Because, again, all the sources kind of say different things. But but, but I, I dig it. So, it. so do you think it is like sort of biblically related to some of, that, some of those same stories? Do you think, at per usual, right, some of these religions kind of overlap? Yeah, it could be the stories they're talking about ancient civilizations, but I think, yeah, I think all the, um, like I said, some, some people like escaped. And I think that's where like you get the Egyptians and the Mayans and all these, um, different people have the same kind of stories. Um, but I think that's where they kind of came from. Like they split up and they spread their knowledge or, you know, around. And this is the artifacts that we're looking at could have been from originally from, from them passed down to like the Egyptians. And then, you know, from there, that's the evidence, the only evidence we have left. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense to me. And it, I mean, clearly I think one of the most obvious things here, I got an article up here that says uh, why civilization is older than we thought. And, and I think even, even by academic standards, right, they're starting to kind of, kind of realize that they, they were off the mark by quite a bit, but I think it's even quite a bit more than that. It's it, it's a uh, th- this stuff goes back, who knows? I mean, we're talking about Bach tunes, right? We're talking about that whole Mayan calendar long count stuff, like like the you know we're a a population of people with anxiety or not anxiety, uh, amnesia, anxiety also, but amnesia, amnesia, yeah, totally amnesia. <laughs> like, we, like uh, don't forget the anxiety because let's let's add that. <laughs> Sorry, yeah, yeah, yeah. Gotta add that. <laughs> no, no, yeah, you're you're totally right. You're totally right. It's uh, it's 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 my brain trying to uh to to do make to make shortcuts as I think. I'm trying to think and then speak at the same time and be ahead of my my words. It doesn't always work, as you guys know. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, yeah, I don't know. I I think I think this goes back incredibly far, and so that's that's part of this. I've got an archaeology uh, uh friend, you know, who actually spent time digging in the dirt. I talk about him from time to time, and he says the same thing. He's like, no, no. He's like, a lot of these places are probably underwater, right? Like we've had these uh these shifts in the oceans and lakes and all the rest of this stuff and if if we right like literally that's probably where the oldest civilizations are we just haven't found them because we we don't have the technology to do you know at least do it well underwater archaeology so pretty wild stuff man uh what else you got for us tonight yeah Uh, i just think it's important that we look at this stuff because it's interesting to talk about even though we might not have any evidence or really understand you know that far back but i think it's good we talk about it and just like sit here and you know um speculate what did they know what was going on at that time what you know the earth was like um so they you know these are civilizations way 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 before us so i think it's interesting we go back and and talk about it so i thank you for that mike yeah, and well, thank you for being part of it. Thanks for listening. Thanks for calling. As always, fantastic stuff from you. What is that book you were reading from? Can you tell us what that was again? Um, right here, it's, uh, it's Harper's Encyclopedia of Mystical and Paranormal Experience. Okay, okay. Uh, the, the author's name, or uh, sorry, it's just an encyclopedia. It has, you know, you flip it open into alphabetical order, and uh, Lemuria, and Mu, Lemuria Mu was in here. So that was interesting. Yeah, yeah. Well, there you go. Well, I didn't know. I didn't know. I didn't know much about. It. I've heard of it before, but I didn't know much about it. And the whole the Tartaria episode, like I said, I didn't know anything about that before. You know, it was all new to me. So when you start looking at that, it's like, wow, there's something going on here. You know, A civilization is way older than we think it is. Yeah, the, the long count calendar is just wiping things out, uh, amnesia, and here we are trying to figure it out by, by <laughs> speculating. But that's okay. We're, we're allowed to be wrong, remember. Uh, so, so amazing stuff. Uh, you, you're the best. What else you got, my friend? That's all. Thanks, Mike. Have a good night. You're the best. Matt in California, happy Thanksgiving to you and the family. You too, bro. Thanks Bye. a lot. Thanks a lot. Have a good night. Here you go, Matt in California. Great stuff as always. And uh, he's got uh, he's got a, a pretty ex- expansive book collection. And so from time to time, he'll share uh, photographs of his books that he's you know finding this stuff from in the Discord. So uh, thank you again, Matt, for the phone call. Thanks for uh, you know pulling out a book and finding the the stuff we're talking about and being able to kind of cross reference, access some things, add to the conversation with that. It's 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 it's, it's a beautiful thing. It's uh, it's why we get together and do this and have a have a good time. So uh, very very good stuff. Thank you for the. Phone 
phone calls tonight. Uh, we're uh, we're just kicking it, talking about Lemuria, talking about uh, ancient civilizations. How far back does this go? Was Lemuria or Atlantis a real place? Uh, do you think it's more of like that in the woo woo too woo for you like ascension type stuff where you know it's like the shamanic uh, journey and you have to take to just a great amount of peyote and you know DMT to like uh, reach Atlantis or whatever? I don't know. Like that, that's the question I have tonight. How much of this do you think is real? How much do you think is kind of woo woo? How much do you, where does it intersect? And uh, therein again lies the conversation. So looking to hear your phone calls if you want to be part of the show seven zero two nine five seven one. 037. That's 702-957-1037. You can join the Discord at troubledminds.org, and we're taking your phone calls there as well. It's uh, great for international folks that don't uh, actually... Uh, okay, well, let's say we'll get charged if they call the 702 area code number, which is in Las Vegas. So speaking of international friends, let's go to our good buddy, Rohan, the, um, the mighty Rohan, Liam Martin of the Exiled Minds podcast. Welcome to the show, my friend. How are you tonight? Hey, buddy. How's it going? You okay? Doing great. Doing great. Doing my thing. Maybe Juice talking about whack shit. How about you? <laughs> What's going on, my man? <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm sure. A, I'm enjoying listening to whack shit. <laughs> <laughs> right on. Right on. Uh, what are your thoughts on this uh, regarding the, the... So clearly the ancient civilizations is a thing. Uh, how deep does this go? Do you think uh, these are physical places or do you think it's some, some sort of that spiritual meditation, woo-woo ascending to these places? Uh, what, what, I'm sure you had some other ideas too. Go right ahead, sir. Well, how deep does it go? I suppose to answer that question is we have to ask a question. How deep is your love? Oh, you just, are just yeah. the deepest. Let's move you. <laughs> That's hot, really. That's so hot. Mm. The deepest. You already know the answer to that question. <laughs> But yeah, yeah, just a little, a little joke there. Yeah, it gets deep, man. It gets deep as you want to get. But uh, talking about talking about lot, actually, uh, I like I love Matt's excitement, you know, and his enthusiasm. It's always lovely to hear that, you know. Yeah, no, well, that's that's, that's what we that's what we do. Uh, talking about is it is it too woo for you? What's up? <laughs> Eating the mic. Get out of here. Uh, <laughs> uh, no. Okay. So, so you tell me. You tell me. Uh, this uh, this stuff does go back quite quite some time. Is is there is there some basis here for actual um, you know like an actual place? For instance, do you think Atlantis was an actual place, or do you think it's some sort of allegory to some other civilization, or maybe like Jennifer described, uh, maybe some uh, aquatic possible uh, civilization? Maybe whether that's ultra terrestrials or some sort of maybe offshoot of uh, human evolution. Who knows? What do you think? Well, I think there might be somewhere. As you get a lot in history, I think there's a lot of. Uh, conflation with the Lumeria Atlantis thing, I reckon. You know, just obviously I don't have the answers, but when I pull it all together and look at all the themes, I'm thinking it, it might be something where, like, there's a kind of... Um, I think Atlantis was a real place. I think the Garden of Eden might be a real place, a physical place that people like Columbus thought were found. Do you know what I mean? But I think Lumeria might, like I say, might be something separate. I like this idea of, oh, it might be like heaven or another dimension. So, so to break it down, I think Atlantis is a real place, physical place. And the people got how they got, and they were trying to do some science experiment, trying to make some technology, and cracked the earth a little bit. Like, made it bubble up on one side, and it created a massive explosion, like a super volcano. So I think that's what happened with Atlantis. But I think the... Lemuria thing might be a bit something a little bit different. It feels a bit more like I think there's a physical place, Atlantis. I think there's a real Garden of Eden type place, which is more Agatha in a Earth stuff. But this side, I like the. But I'm loving this idea of another dimension place because I'd heard this in terms of the Atlantis story, and I'm wondering if this is where we get the two things joined together. So the idea with the Atlantis thing is that the remote viewers reviewed it. They said they was trying to tap the earth, trying to do geothermal energy. It created a cascade effect. They knew it were coming. So some people did a runner. Some people tried to quickly use the Merkabas and sort of like say go to another dimension sort of thing, go on another plane, get away from everything and just think, well, you know, I'll do this now and move away from these ways or whatever. So I think some people did that. Some people thought, no, no, we can fix this. Here's scientists. No, no, we can fix it. So they all blew up. Some of them did a runner and just thought, oh, no, what are we going to do? Sort of thing. 
and that might be like people like Toff, you know, re trying to rebuild stuff. But then I think some people supposedly um, kind of try to use the Merkaba to alter themselves. But then but some people decided to, I mean, it's, I know this is complicated, but some people decided to change the bodies and become like Bigfoot type creatures. So no matter what happens in the future, they'll be able to survive. They'll be really, really rugged. Do you know what I'm saying? And I thought, well, I know it's a bit of a non-answer, but I think that's what it is. I think it gets really conflated. Like, and like you made the point of civilization is so much older and it changes everything. It really does change everything because it completely puts the final nail in the coffin of Charles Darwin's theory of man as well. So, you know. Yeah, yeah, I'm with you. And it, it, all over the place, all over the place with this. I, I do like the Merkaba idea. So that's uh, so the Merkaba refresh my memory here. Like like I thought it was like a, a like an ascension process that we can maybe ascend to becoming a Merkaba. But I, I've also heard that they they are craft that could take us places. Yeah. right. Yeah, like vehicles. Yeah, that have a difference to things. And, and funnily enough, um, it's 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 a bit of a spoiler, but not if I don't tell you too much detail. In this old Stargate story. That's the whole thing of it, that the people who built it were ancient humans that learned to do this like Merkaba type stuff. They learned to so-called, quote-unquote, ascend. Do you know what I mean? And that's, that, that's the whole premise of it. And that's why I'm not around anymore. Do you know what I'm saying? So, so, and so that's what I thought was really interesting because all these things come together. And like saying aquatic civilization, well, hang on a minute, right? Because we've got a film there, haven't we? We've got the film The Abyss, right? We've got that, and we've also we've got we've got a pyramid on the seabed within the confines of the Bermuda Triangle. Okay, and that's and it's supposed to be translucent, transparent. You know what I mean? And uh, people went to investigate this. You know, I think it's French and British divers went to investigate it because the first person who found it by accident was in the seventies, and they confirmed it was there. But that story disappeared really quickly. Do you know what I'm saying? So I don't know. Is that is that an under? If it's on the seabed in the Bermuda Triangle, and I, mean, I don't know the the height of the seabed there, but that seems too deep for even getting, you know, putting the water, flood waters back from 13, 15,000 years ago. Is that so, well, they're already underwater anyway, is that the pyramid? Do you know what I mean? I, I don't know, I don't know. Yeah, that's a good question, because I mean, when we're talking about those long count cycles, and I like to say Bakhtuns, because of course they say the Mayan calendar was, you know, the most accurate for, for prim, you know, quote, primitive peoples. But but if we're talking about those long count calendars, and I like a like a mini ice age becomes nothing nothing in in those huge cycles right those twenty thirty thousand uh -huh. year cycles, and then of course yeah. like they're like they're saying in the chat here when the, when that ice age melted of course the coastal cities are going to be buried like under the water, and that's just the way it is right because well for how long did that ice age last hundreds thousands of years possibly even a mini ice age. And so clearly yeah. people don't stop building civilizations and, you know, towns and cities and things just because there's some snow. I mean, talk to our Canadian friends. I, we got a, a friend, uh, Sean, he, a uh, long, long time friend of troubled minds. He, he gets up at five o'clock in the morning and he goes out in the snow out there. Like he, he says, it's a, a little more dangerous this time of year because the polar bears move a little quicker than you do. <laughs> I mean, you know, like they were still doing these things. And so when all that melts, well, it puts you underwater, doesn't it? And so kind of those, it washes those civilizations away. So, so this stuff, mm -hmm. like, I, I don't have a hard time believing that maybe Atlantis or Lemuria or some of this stuff, they actually were real places. But it is fascinating to me that maybe they weren't. And maybe it's ideas, you know, not just, but not just ideas like speaking in mythology, but speaking in terms of maybe these ascension processes where like Derek said, you walk into one side of a cave and don't realize you're actually passing through some sort of like um, a time warp or portal or something. And then you come out the other side and you're in Agartha, you're in Telos or yep. something like this. It's pretty wild. Pretty wild stuff. Yeah, we talked about this because also as well, um, a great place for those kinds of things. If it, well, in terms of particle physics, I know that um, they, they like to have uh, sometimes have detectors really deep underground because you're using the Earth as a kind of shield. Do you know what I'm saying? And we're talking those really fast, tiny things. That's why you need to be shielded so so you're not detecting anything at all. So if you get any movement, you know it was definitely a neutrino or a tay. You know what I'm saying? 
So then when I think about that, if only incredibly fast particles can move at deep depths in the Earth, then it's like, well, yeah, they'd be good places to isolate certain particle types, exotic, you know what I mean? And I think, mm, it kind of makes sense. Like using um, the Earth as a lens itself. Do you know what I mean? And also as well, the Earth's constantly generating a lot of sound. You know, it gets into a whole bunch of other stuff, doesn't it? You know, so, yeah, the portal stuff, man, it's, yeah, that's a, that's a fascinating thing. For, I really <laughs> love that stuff, Paddy. And that, and, that, and they, they pull in, uh, say, summon, uh, summoning, well, not summoning, but they get getting certain vibrational levels to get the old ones back, sort of thing. And I think, well, there's all that stuff as well. You ever heard about sleeping giants as well in perhaps time dilation chambers? Yeah, uh, so the sleeping giants, right? They say they're the hillsides, right? Like the the the, the mountain sticking up is just the hip of the giant who's buried underground, right? Yeah, yeah. I remember there used to be a. I seen a YouTube video of this. <laughs> I don't even know what it was, but it was claiming to be. Um, it would look like a. <laughs> it would look like it's a, a corpse, a dead person, but the one like decomposed, and had all like royal clothes on, and jewelry. And these stones over the rise, and they had all this gold royal stuff on. And they were saying that this was like a giant, not incredibly huge, but they were saying this is a giant that they've found in somewhere in the Middle East. They've accidentally cracked into this tomb or whatever. And this giant, and then that's what I was about. They, oh, they're in these chambers that are supposed to be really slowing time down, and they're kind of resting, ready to, ready to wake up at some point, and they've cracked one of them. And so they're taking pictures of this thing. And, and it's like, wow. Well, I have to it's nonsense, but these days I'm starting to wonder because, you know, there's been a lot, you know what I mean? And I think, well, hang on a minute, hang on a minute, because this gets the practical. If we found giant bones and we've got the hundreds of examples of ancient technologies better than today, we're now discovering things about physics and sound and cymatic patterns and, and paleolithic cave paintings of the cymatic pattern for iron. We're seeing all this stuff, you know, and it's like... Well, if we can do this stuff now, like if we can do genetic engineering now, then we know it's possible, right? So if people of the past, <laughs> do you know what I mean? If it's civilization goes back a lot further, it stands to reason that, yeah, they would have figured out how to do it too. So therefore probably did it, you know? And there's plenty, like I say, there's plenty of stories about merfolk all over the world. So it's like, well, <laughs> why not, right? Why not? Why not? Uh, it goes back to ancient Egypt too. Now, there's a weird uh, twist with this uh, as well. So, so oddly enough, uh, so like I said, I was digging into this Lemurian civilization stuff and right uh, the Telos in, in the mountain in Mount Shasta and how you know when Lemuria supposedly underwent some sort of a cataclysm, uh, the, some of them went to Mount Shasta in this town uh, city named Telos underground. All right, but then they say that others went to ancient Egypt and actually assumed the role of gods, which I know. Well, this is a uh, this is kind of near and dear uh -oh. to your heart, right? Exactly where we're headed with this. But they but they became Ra and they became Osiris and they became right. They went and they helped uh, bring about uh, the ancient um, Egy Egyptian civilization by teaching us all of those things, right? How to how to build the pyramids, mm. the whole bit, right? The, the all we we've talked about this recently too with the. Uh, uh, the the you know the mummification processes and how to basically right like if you're speaking strictly scientifically how to preserve DNA for thousands of years through the mummification process right for what like for what we, we've talked about this in the past but like for what right there's a, there's a lot of weirdness well, here and how it all kind of ties well, in but but go ahead well, how about some weirdness for this then you know, you know you've heard of Billy Meyer right and you know they've got this group going on or whatever. And I, but I've, I've mentioned this before. I've, re I've read all the original Billy Meyer contact notes before he kind of restarted and said, "Oh, the contacts have started again," sort of thing, right? So I, re I read all of them, and uh, and he said that there was. He kind of said that that there's a there's a group. He kind of said that what you just said that he said there's a group that split off with this stuff, went to Egypt, but he calls them the Giza intelligence. You know what I mean? And he was sort of saying like, "Oh, they kind of still still a few of them left." And they kind of like come and screw with them and, you know, come and do little bits and that. Almost like, it almost makes them sound like they've kind of teamed up with some of the people that help the reptilians kind of thing. Like they got the little greys or the Orion group or whatever. And then they got this geezer intelligence, which is like the last remnants of all of that, all of this stuff. All this, uh, the, the mini bomb Atlantis people, you know what I'm saying? And then, but then when you're talking, going into a mountain, 
I think an underground and there's so many underground civilization uh, you know like inside mountains that place in Turkey weren't there right we've got the uh, the Navajo talk about the ant people and we come and say no we came from underground the men of two heart and the men of one heart became separate and then we come out of the ground and the only western guy as far as we know that ever saw where that place was in America had his eyes removed do you know what I mean so it's like hang on a minute this is underground stuff it's just like well, it's like we're two tier civilization you know what I'm saying and some of us on the surface some of us are in either underground or it's in another dimension do you know what I mean that makes sense it's like, it's like a two tier civilization thing going on so I don't know maybe it's about the vibration maybe we've been kind of been kicked out of the Garden of Eden literally yeah. but, do you know what I'm saying yeah and like you've got to or get your way back in but we just got oblivious to all of this stuff because we've been living a fairy tale for a millennia yeah yeah so so uh, let's say the garden of eden is agartha it is is a it is underground it is where where ancient lemuria actually retreated to uh yeah i i like the idea here and i i i would not be shocked to be perfectly honest like like being you know like we speculate a lot we talk, say drinking the maybe juice all the stuff here but i wouldn't be shocked if there was you know uh, critters underground that we have no idea about you know it, it wouldn't shock me at all at all even in the, in the slightest right like we talked about bigfoot and dogman and things like this we've talked about you know a couple of days ago dogman and so if, if that's the case right and maybe these entities do live in these caves and they go deep they go deep i mean we're, you know we're we're uh we barely know anything about this planet we think you know we think we know all the stuff you talk to science and you know we've learned a ton don't get me wrong but like, there's so much we don't know. Just like Jennifer was saying, the, the bottom of the ocean is basically unexplored, almost entirely. Right? They do some sonar mm -hmm. or whatever and whatnot, and you know, it's, it's, it's drop a, a submarine, little drone, sub drone down here or there. But like, clearly, we've never been to the bottom, like in any it's, substantial way. It, it's it's wild. Yeah. Man. Can, I've heard scientists say we can literally tell you more about space than what's in our oceans. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, exactly. In terms yeah. of data, it's like what what. Yeah, <laughs> but that's because we just can't go there. Can you just can't really do anything? It, it's just it's just so awkward to work in that kind of environment, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? But uh, I'd say it's all a bit all a bit strange. But it's interesting. Telos is the name as well. Telos is is the place because I thought you know you get these alarm bells. I do. I get these red flags that come up in my head, and I think Telos, Telos, Telos. Was like, oh yeah, that's more pop culture references really obscure one and it's from a tv show made by the creators the producers that made the x-files and this show wasn't really advertised so it flopped but it's actually a pretty good concept and it's called space above and beyond and telos was the first colony we ever made and it was uh, there was a bit of a spiritual form you know it's almost like you had to train for years to get to it it was like a big glorious thing that humanity was doing but they get attacked by aliens do you know what i'm saying end up in this big war got these aliens that are in that battle suits who didn't even know aliens existed they're like you know they're completely different they've got organic craft that they actually fly as a team like an orchestra you know it's nuts right but then it turns out that um at, you know at the end of the first season they really they find one of their planet and they realize that they found like a layer where they have eggs and it's all kind of spiritual like a temple and they're not and they find one of these aliens not in a battle suit but they don't know what the aliens look like because in the battle suits if you try and take the helmet off it dissolves the, the flesh so you can't see what they look like to keep themselves anonymous so unbeknownst to them they warn this alien that they're going to do this big surprise attack right so the, the aliens immediately sue for peace and it turns out in the meantime we found out that that planet that we colonized where the government knew there was aliens there and kind of killed them so they could colonize the planet so as soon as these aliens saw some compassion from us, they immediately sued for peace because they thought it was just animals, you know. But, you know, it's almost like it was a big misunderstanding. And I thought, I think, oh, my God, that's a bit of these kind of themes that pop up in these pop culture stuff. And I think, and then, and then it seems to be that this is seriously realistic. It does seem to be a kind of a rule that you've got to tell people what you're doing. You know, we talked about this before, so I don't know, what do you think of that, Mike? I like it. Uh, I've never heard of that that actual episode or that uh, that season. You said or uh, Talos is what it's called. Did they cancel it after that first season and that was it? 
Uh, yeah, yeah, Space Above and Beyond. Yeah, they cancelled it after one season, but it was a really great show. And it was like the fact that these aliens are the most realistic kind of aliens I've ever seen because this felt so alien. The felt so different. They knew nothing about them. You know, it's, and the fact that the ships have flown like an orchestra. I thought that was just crazy. That was out of this, that was out, out of this world, pardon the pun. And they even used... Um, there was a brilliant episode where they use a, they use a, a concept from the, from the Second World War. And they send in, they, they talk about a story of where someone sent in a fake battleship with real, with real officers on, in offi- well, people on in officer uniforms, but, but they're all corpses. So they made it look like it was really important officers that, that a ship had been sunk. So they thought they got a big score, thought they killed a bunch of generals and colonels. And it was all a ruse. They just put uniforms on these corpses and floated this boat in. And they did a similar thing in the space thing. They used one of their ships, these alien ships. But yeah, but it's just, it's so detailed, the way it kind of lays it all out, all the little details, you know. And it's just, it's, it's brilliant. It's, I really recommend that show. And they even introduce um, clone warriors as well that are almost like they're the new outcasts <laughs> because not, not, they've all been cloned and born at 18, so they've got no families. So everyone thinks of us as an inhuman. So that's like the new racism. It's crazy, man. It's right, brilliant. right. We're, we're going to be uh, pretty soon. It's coming. We're going to be waving signs for robot rights. You'll see. It's on the way. Robot rights. Robot <laughs> rights. Robot <laughs> rights. <laughs> it's coming. It's coming. It's coming. Uh, it, just because. Well, uh, once uh, once the robot overlords show up, if we're not nice to them, they're not going to be nice to us. <laughs> That's for damn sure. All right. So uh, great stuff there. As always. Um, uh, what else you got, my friend? Uh, uh, as everybody knows here, Liam Martin. The famous Mighty Rohan is uh, he's got a podcast called Exiled Minds and you can check that out uh, in the description down below link in the description go go check him out and uh, uh, definitely give him some love uh, what else you got on this man uh, civilizations yeah. old and uh, who knows uh, meditations and portals and shit man it's all right. I got a question for you because I don't know if you know I said why, why do you have uh, submarine bases in the desert uh, why would you what do you mean? Why would you? But, um, but um, uh, I thought there's, an, uh, there's a submarine base in America, in the desert. I can't remember where it is now. It's like years ago. Seen it. Yeah, but, and I looked at this actual submarine base in the desert, right? And it was linked into that, you know, there's tunnels for submarine. You know, we would say, oh, you can get into a secret entrance in uh, Antarctica. And this and that film um, was at Land That Time Forgot, where they go for a tunnel in a submarine and they end up in a, like, another place. And I thought, well, that's, that's interesting because you're supposed to get these... Uh, <laughs> Tunnels all over the place, aren't you? Do you know what I mean? It's like, but in the desert, I thought it was weird to have a, a sort of navy base. It don't mean there's ships there, does it? Just because it's a navy base, it just thought that was kind of funny. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. That's a, that's a. I, it wouldn't surprise me uh, actually if there was like some sort of a, uh, you know, uh, underneath the the you know the the continental shelf, as it were, some way to kind of get in and uh, maybe come up and I don't know. Lake Superior or something. <laughs> it wouldn't surprise yeah, me a single bit. Yeah, it doesn't say much, does it? Little, little drop-off spots and that. Because it's like Jennifer mentioned, in Antarctica, there is tropi- uh, there's massive cabins under, underground, you know, it's not official stuff, not conspiracy stuff. And it's like, you know, a lake there big enough to have its own tides and little islands and things. And it's because they were surprised about finding stuff down there. But of course, it's going to be, once you, it's going to be warm down there, isn't it? It's good insulators now. Yeah, so... Yeah. All kinds of crap down there, and if we look back to first ever, anything, well, first literature I ever read about talking about, you know, underground civilizations, Jules, uh, the Jules Verne stuff, and then it just into the earth and that, and it's like, well, they had everything tropical, really hot, you know, they had a they had a hollow earth situation like a sun, like the Smoky God book, they had uh, things growing huge, you know, makes you wonder, they know about it already sort of thing and, and Lincoln to uh, Abraham Lincoln talked about giants meeting gi- seeing giants and shit and I think hang on a minute what, what the go. fuck yeah, what the fuck what the fuck how did we get here <laughs> what just happened <laughs> no <laughs> and he was tall anyway when I used to be tall anyway so if he's talking about giants that was in, yeah it wasn't kind of like big. six seven or something dude was huge <laughs> dude was huge <laughs> that's a big dude <laughs> Totally, totally. Great stuff, Rohan. You're the best. Uh, everybody follow uh, Exile Minds Podcast. Uh, you're welcome to stay, of course. Let's, let's, uh, let's go to Tam Bam. If you're there, Tam Bam, you said uh, you wanted to call in and be part of the show. What's up, Tam Bam in South Africa? Welcome to the show. How are you? You're on with Rohan and Mike. I'm fine. How are you? Oh, doing very well. Better. Much better. Monday was a bad day. That's good. Wednesday is a great day. Yeah. I'm feeling fantastic. And we're talking about crazy That's shit. Excellent. 
Excellent. Excellent news. Right. Thank you. 100%. Agreed. Uh, what do you think about all this stuff uh, regarding, again, back to, back to uh, let's say, Atlantis, let's say Lemuria is where we started. Do you think these were real places, or do you think there's something to this kind of portal effect or maybe this woo-woo ascension stuff? I don't know. What are your thoughts on all this? <laughs> well, I had such a chuckle just now because... I was just thinking, listening to everybody on the show, all the callers were are just so fantastic. And they just, for me, everybody is vibrating on a, every time you have a show, they're all vibrating a little bit higher, a little bit higher, that eventually, I swear to fuck, someone's going to, one of these higher beings are going to come to your tribe of minds group and say, hey, like, fuck, well done. You've ascended <laughs> because you can't get any higher. Like, fuck, let's go. <laughs> you know uh, well uh let's go brandon <laughs> let's go brandon <laughs> exclusive interview <laughs> good stuff good stuff Cam. Uh, yeah ho- hopefully that that happens like i said uh if i just disappear one day like literally just boom, well <laughs> it's either jimmy hoffa style or maybe i'm in shangri-la <laughs> I Maybe, but like, what do we do? Do we call 911 or do you just let you ascend? <laughs> How would you know? Can you send us a message? Exactly. I have no idea. I have no idea. Uh, okay. good, stuff. good stuff. Funny joke. What, what are your thoughts here? Go right ahead. I like, okay, I wrote, I wrote notes for the first time because I actually know nothing about the subject, but you know, my mind goes off on this fucking tangent every time someone calls in and when you talk as well. Um, so, I do believe that Lumeria and Atlantis and inner Earth are real things. They're like really here. But um, these beings, these people vibrate so high that we cannot see them, but they still exist today. So their continents still exist. Their, their places still exist, but they vibrate so high that they're literally on an ascended Earth, but they're still here and we can't see them but they can see us. And it's kind of like, it makes sense because they would want to protect their civilization and the way of their life and, um, and protect themselves. And they, so they hide themselves, you know, in a higher vibration. So I, that's like one theory of how, if and maybe they still do exist. Um, yeah. Yeah. I so like that was it. one. I kind of like it. So, so uh, if if so, think of it in terms of this, right? Like, like it is a little bit woo woo to talk in terms of mm. frequency and vibration and these types of things. But Nikola Tesla did it, right? So it legi- le- legitimizes us. We're, so we're good. But point being is that what if we found a way to maybe step into the next dimension? That's the same thing. Well, that, right? It's literally the same thing. Well, but it's a scientific like, oh. thing, right? Exactly. So instead yeah. of like, you know, like meditation and Merkabuzz and all the rest of this, it's like, well, uh, you know, we, we popped a, a particle in CERN and it gave us a portal to, uh, well, the, wherever the, the DMT machine elves hang out. And now that's where they went. And the Lemurians are now the DMT machine elves. I'm with you. I follow you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but, okay, but let's look at it um, physiolo- physiologically and that's in, in an anatomy sense of terms. If we 100% decalcify our pineal gland and we meditate every day and we follow the ancient whatever of eating plants and we become one with nature, we will vibrate and we have no, and we have no fluoride in our water and no steroids in our meats and things like that. It is 100% possible that we will vibrate so high and this is what the Tibetans believe. You know, they, they meditate and they do these things. And their goal is basically, and I'm, I'm dead serious, is to turn into a fucking rainbow. Seriously, yeah. they want to vibrate so high that they become light and rainbow light. That is their goal. What's that term? There's so, a, the rainbow form? What is that term? There's a, like a rainbow like a, body. Rainbow it's body. Great. Yeah, rain, it's a Buddhist term, yeah. right? Yeah, Buddhist. tell a little secret as well, actually, just mentioning that, only because it, I wouldn't normally say this, but only because it really fits in. That shit's for real, I know, in my experience, yeah. because I, because I think, I, this is, uh, there's a story behind this, and if you hear the story, you probably know why that would, if it's ever going to work, that's when it will work. But that's actually happened to me in my hands. I've seen a rainbow come out of my hands before. No, no shit. For real, I'm so for jealous. real, for real. Do you know what I'm saying? It was a bad to be, it was costly to get it, but I was like, what oh, the fuck? You know what I mean? But shit happened, man. Huh? Don't you? And, it's, and you yeah. know, the funny thing was, it happened because it happened in, in the very moment after 
I, I, I thought a joke in my head because I was I was praying for my dad in a desperate situation to like talk to him, and I said, "Oh, I, you know, I, I'm I'm into conspiracy stuff. You don't need to come in your corporeal form. Come as you are." And of course, my memory association made me think that's a Nirvana song, "Come as you are." And as soon as I thought Nirvana, I seen these two miniature like shadows float in the room like little Buddhas. They sat in my hands, dissolved into my hands. Looked like a pile of crystals, like blue on one side, red on the other, and then made golden light come out, hit each other, scattered everywhere, made a rainbow sphere around me that all went purple. Then somehow I superpositioned behind myself and could see what looked like golden Tibetan symbols stuck to this sphere. Do you know what I'm saying? And then well. it just disappeared. It only took a few seconds, but I was like, holy shit! As soon as you think Nirvana, and then that happens. You got you got wonder, ain't you? Like, what the what the fuck's that? But look what it took to get you to that point. Now imagine being in that in that position in that point for a longer time, and that's that's kind of the goal, right? Yeah. So I think, I think that's what it is. I think it just like say it takes a certain vibration. I'm glad that you sort of bring that up. And then I wonder because you get this talk of all oh, the Earth's going to move to like a fifth dimension or a fifth level, and it's like the frequency is going to separate. And I wonder if that's what kind of black holes are in a way. Maybe they put spots in space where things have got so dense and so heavy that it kind of splits off. Do you know what I'm saying? So then that makes it's almost like defragmenting your hard drive. So if you be reading negative, while well, the earth and the planet and the animals and everything wants to move up, well, if you won't, then eventually it's got to break away. Like it's so dense, it like stretches away from the fabric of space and then kind of almost breaks off. So then the negative stuff's got its own hard drive, so it can go ahead and do that. It's got an environment that suits it. But the positive bit is, is separated from that on another partition. So now it can go on and do its thing. So in we start in the yin and yang cycle again. Except in the positive one, there's only a tiny bit of negative left. And in the negative place, there's only a tiny bit of hope. But eventually, they will all invert, won't it? Well, like my brain exploded trying to think about that. <laughs> Seriously. I thought about okay. it a lot. <laughs> <laughs> really? Okay, so let me just get to my other theory. My other theory is, you know, like that uh, Wonder Woman movie where those, um, I forgot what they call those women. Um, uh, Amazon. 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 Forgot, you know. Pardon? The Amazons. The Amazon. Yes, the Amazons. And you know their whole civilization was in a dome? And you couldn't see them unless you go to this thing? Maybe some of the continents of her ancient history are like that. Maybe they're in a dome protected environment. Uh, uh, Wakanda. Wakanda. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> now we're now we're Wakanda getting forever. we're gonna get into flat earth here in a minute. <laughs> but no, all right, so so no, no. a dome. So a dome meaning that uh if if there was a dome like like let's say in the mountains or something like this or some sort of secluded valley and there was like mm. you know one of those Wakanda type force fields, uh, clearly if it was like a an, an extraterrestrial or like an advanced technology, clearly they could have a shield. They would also be um, uh, like like uh, camouflaged, right? Like you wouldn't be able to see inside of it. You, you would think that there's nothing in the valley, right? I mean, that, that makes total sense to me that you wouldn't just be able to see this force field out there in the middle of wherever the hell, right? Yes. And we as humans, mere mortals, are not allowed to because we're asleep. We're sheep. And we follow society. And the people who actually break away from this whole thing and do ascend or vibrate higher are sent secret messages to go, listen, I'm waiting for my secret message to come to me and say, go to this place. You've been granted ascension to here it's it's bound to happen i'm telling you bound to happen i'm, anyway. <laughs> I'm telling you <laughs> okay all right fair enough i'm sorry i'm sorry <laughs> i'm sorry for questioning you <laughs> go ahead <laughs> I, I i dig the idea i dig the idea so so uh so so do you think that a civilization like that then is what we're talking about in terms of um, maybe Lemuria, maybe Atlantis, this type of thing that uh, I guess it could, it could mean that those places still exist. They're just hidden from the outside world, right? That's what, I, that's what I'm saying. We're not worthy to go there. We're not part of their lineage. We're not, 
we don't practice what they practice and we just follow the normal society or what we consider normal. I think there is something there. We are, we are not worthy. I think maybe uh, in the, the terms of worthy, it's like a judgment word, isn't it? So it kind of put, puts, yeah. puts us down like, so I want to switch that up for like not ready or not as of the right vibration or weren't mature enough. Right. But I think Fair we're enough. getting to that point now where we're perhaps, perhaps we're, you know, we are or some of us are and I think God like lead, lead the way with that and I think it makes still a sense like the Tower of Babel to me it makes sense because that everything's based on frequency so it has to be and it's almost like you can't see things that you're not on a frequency of like I've talked about you know the conquistadors and stuff not uh, talking about people Aztecs not being able to see the ships it's too alien to them sort of thing and it's like you say uh, if you've got eyes to see the thing you'll see it you know it's easy to to conceptually, perceptually not quote unquote see something. Do you know what I'm saying? You know, you can ignore it like like um, if someone's pulling the wool over your eyes. Some people, if you know the truth of something, it don't work, does it? But if you don't know about the thing, then you, you, you know, it, it, it's all like a perception thing. It's like I said, the vibration stuff, it really, really makes sense. It really makes sense to me. Yeah, me too. And then um, then I wanted to talk about uh, what Jennifer said about the aquatic beings. And, you know, she really made a very profound statement, you know. Um, aquatic beings, mermaids, whatever you want to call them, um, underground civilizations, I mean, underwater civilizations, and uh, what pyramids underwater in China, all of that has a big role to play in, in this as well. Um, and... The, one of the things which we can we know is that, that they tell us that the ocean is just too deep. We've never seen the bottom of the ocean and it's, we've only discovered 5% and the rest of the ocean is undiscovered, blah, blah, blah. But there's a reason, I think, why they say that. They don't want us going down there because of maybe these civilizations, these alien bases, or um, whatever might be un underground. I think there, there's a reason why they tell us not to go there. And we just stand back and just say, okay, we won't. And they give us all scientific, yes, yeah, some of them is true, but we, they give us all scientific reasons why we, we don't. Please don't fucking tell me that we go, can go to the fucking moon, but we can't go in our oceans. Well, that's a great yes. point in terms of uh, so many things being inverted, because don't they always mm. want us to look up towards aliens in pop culture? Always look to the sky, mm. you know, look up, don't look down. And there's so many aliens. I mean, there's, there's, there's so much footage of aliens flying and hitting the ocean and going underneath the ocean, lakes and rivers. And like Jennifer said, there's probably caverns underneath with air and or where civilizations can thrive. So it all, it all makes sense to me, what she said, completely. And, and uh, yeah, they say they're inhospitable or impossible to reach places for us. So if you want to hide, the places you go. Aren't it? Yeah, and then you know what the best is? If you want to hide something uh, brilliantly, you hide it in plain sight. That is, yep. you know, what is what it is. Oh yeah. Then I then if you take a literal take of this whole story, how you know, the, Mike, you showed a. A map earlier on on the show about the con with the continent of um, Lemuria, and it's it's mind blowingly huge. So if you look at it literally, where how does a massive continent like that just disappear without any trace, without any history saying anything? I mean, I know we talk. I mean, I have zero concept um, in terms of. 120,000 years ago to two, two, 2 million years ago. I have zero concept of time. I can't think like that. But still, there must be some kind of evidence how a huge continent can just disappear like that. But now, in, in, if we go and research Lemuria, it all is a, um, it's all a concept. The, the concept of uh, the hidden or the, lost pla or the lost continent of Lemuria. It's hypothetical, and it's, they don't make it sound real. And if it did, if there was a continental drift, where? Where? I mean, I don't understand. 
All right. Um, it's almost like it's got to be a misidentification or it's got to be like, say, phase shifted out of reality or obliterated. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. even if it uh, did dissipate into tiny little islands, the amount of surface area of that island still doesn't equate to if you put all the islands in that area put together, it still doesn't even come close to the size of Lemuria, the continent itself. Mm. But then again, I suppose so then I thought, we don't... Sorry, go ahead. And so then I thought about, okay, so who is... And then I looked at the map, so who's the closest? And that's Australia. If there must, Then you've got to look at Australian history and uh, ancient Aboriginal natives. And um, what does their history say about going as far back as they can? What, is, what does their history say about maybe Lemuria? And then I stumbled apart, across a book, um, and, the, and in the front cover, the woman, it's called The Woman of Lemuria, and those women look exactly like Aboriginal women. And it was quite bizarre to me. And um, so there must be com- some kind of history in the ancient Aboriginal history um, data or explaining about Lemuria and not, it's not as a hypothetical continent. It's just too big. Yeah, I mean... Yeah, and that... Go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead, go ahead sorry. No, go ahead, Ryan. You're up, buddy. Do it. Get to the chat. Oh, okay, oh. okay. I'm doing it. I'm doing it. Okay, I'm doing it. So, what I was going to say, oh, I lost the train of thought um, No, I lost it. I lost my train of thought. Hang on, we'll come back in a sec. Go ahead, Mike, okay. sorry. We'll come back in a sec. Actually, we got Daryl here. Uh, Daryl, are you there? Let's go to Daryl. Yes, I'm here. I'm here. I'm, here. I, I'm sorry to interrupt, but um, I was just going to add one more twist to this whole thing. I was just thinking um, prior to this that, you know, when the Earth got hit by some sort of asteroid and it made the tilt of the Earth change, that perhaps cover up like Atlantis and Lemuria. And I just Googled Earth tilt Lemuria and Atlantis and I got this great article. It's like full of different information and concepts of how um, they put um, Atlantis between like um, the United States and Africa and they put Lemuria, of course, in the South Pacific before the Earth tilts, for example. And that would explain why Lemuria has those. Um, why, like, Madagascar would have, like, monkeys that look like lemurs, you know? Those, those wonderful um, creatures, they're beautiful. Um, you know what I'm talking about, the lemurs. Mm. I mean, that's, that's like, you know, an animal that managed to survive through something and exists in very, you know, in, endemic to um, Madagascar, right? So that would explain how they got there, perhaps, maybe, and why they called it Lemuria. You know, after the Lemurians, those lemurs, I mean, right? Yeah, that's what it was so named after. 100%, yep. Just a thought there, you know, that that, that cause of the Earth tilt could have caused, um, you know, a lot of water to um, cover up these continents or to split the continents, for example. You know, that's why they um, split apart and are covered underwater. You know, so I just thought that would be a, a, perhaps an answer to what happened to those two, two places in, um, you know, it could be very well buried underwater. And this whole article I just posted just has like a whole new concept about like, you know, Lemurians being part gas and, you know, they're like three stages of development on the planet or seven different races. And they started out really primordial, you know, really early development, you know, in different vibrations. And they didn't have bones that were formed yet. Very, very weird concepts, but cool, you know. I just recommend you read what I posted, The Fossil Hunters, unless Michael posted that. I'm not sure if you found that as well, but I just found it. I thought it was really interesting. Just saying. Yeah, definitely. Good stuff. Good stuff. Thanks for thanks for uh, adding that to the, the conversation. I, I don't see the link. If you can, uh, just when you get a moment, please send it to me. I'd love to, I'd love oh, to take a look I'll at it. I'll put it in general. I'll okay. put it in um, the show chat. I got it. I got it. I got it. I got okay. It. I got it. My bad. Let's pull this up. All right, so we're we're talking about Lemuria, and see, I I think the thing is right when you talk about ancient civilizations, it it goes all over the damn place, and like like again, right, like who knows? Like we're talking about these these long count cycles 
but back to the Bach tunes, right back to this uh, Mayan calendar type stuff where they weren't counting in terms of, you know, like an ice age, like they were counting in terms of like two and a half ice ages, you know, like, and this is, this is exactly what we're looking at. And so we kind of don't know. There's a whole lot of this that it's probably buried. It's literally buried underneath the oceans. And that's just the way this is. And so, you know, sure, we get some conjecture, we get to speculate, we get to do these things. But because, well, I mean, clearly, if we can't take an archaeological team to the bottom of the damn ocean, how the, how the hell are we supposed to know, right? Mm. It, it, it's pretty well. if we can't yeah. trust an archaeological team to give us a real date in, <laughs> right? And that kind of, I'm just saying, right? So, but what, that's, I remember my train of thought, sorry, I'm going to bash my way in. Yeah, we don't know for sure, me and you, all us listen now, we don't know how deep the oceans are in different areas. We have to take people's word for it. So for all we know, there's a huge area of the ocean that's, uh, that's only, say, uh, 95 metres deep as big as a continent, right? Well, if, if that's the case, then before the Younger Dryas period of 15,000 years ago, that area would have been above water. So it could yeah. just be that, yeah, it, it, they're just telling us it's not there. They're just telling us it's this deep. When really, there's a, in a continent, right, just stand there. You know, everyone knows about it, but do you know what I mean? That's <laughs> what I say. You know, it's, like, it's like in Star Wars, I mentioned earlier, they lost an entire star system where there was cloning the troops, or the clone warriors. And they just delete all they did was delete it from the database because it was so vast, the space so vast, just got rid of it from people's memories, you know. And that's uh, like, do you is it a lost city or is it a city made lost? Like you say, you know. And so I recommend the film Annihilation as well in terms of that lost areas. That's a film where there's a spot where soldiers are keep getting sent in. It's like it looks all fractal. It's like something's happening to reality. And every soldier gets sent in doesn't return because the whole reality is changing in this little spot on the earth. So, and I so that you. brings me to my next point, and you made such a valid point. Um, you know, th- uh, how history, I think, has been rewritten re- and, and hidden from us. Um, this one guy that I stumbled across, he actually had an encyclopedia dated back to 1952. And um, can you hear me? Yes. Go right ahead. Okay. The da- sorry. And he, the, 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 the inside, the, the, sorry? You're good. You're good. Go right ahead. Okay. We're listening. Um, so he had an encyclopedia dated back to 1952. And he, sh- he showed that the current encyclopedia book and the 1952 encyclopedia book was two different books. There's information in our current one that was taken out and rewritten and changed. And, and that's, our, that's encyclopedia. I mean, our kids are looking up encyclopedia and, and, and trying to figure out the air quote fact history for school. I mean, that's crazy. And, um, and then I wanted to also to quickly just talk about, you know, Ronald called earlier and was talking about heaven on earth, um, the Eden, uh, if Lemuria was heaven on earth. Go ahead. Go right ahead. Uh, uh, real quick, okay, real quick. before you do that, Ronald, yeah. has, Ronald has a good point over on Rockfin. We can't go into the ocean until 30 minutes after we've eaten. Just want to add that to the, uh, <laughs> to, to add that to the record. <laughs> go, go right ahead. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't get that. Uh, we can't go. You're not ahead. supposed to go in the water no, until 30 can. minutes. Uh, scuba diving. Oh, <laughs> right. It, it, it's a joke. It's a joke. Go right ahead, Tim. <laughs> yeah, you'll get it crammed. Yeah. So, um, if Lemuria was, if, and this comes, it brings everything together. If Lemuria was the heaven on earth, garden of Eden, um, you know, as it says in the Bible, in the Bible it also says that, you know, Eden is actually when um, Adam and Eve were kicked out, the gates to the Garden of Eden were are, were protected by huge angels, um, however you want to decide that for yourself, that they cannot come back in again. So again, maybe it is a, a higher vibrational situation where you are not there yet to go into this place this garden of eden yet you're not vibrating high enough to enter it here so again maybe it is there but it isn't for us yeah you were not prepared right you're not allowed to enter until you're prepared and whatever that preparation is is uh is uh in front of us 
It, it's the challenge, right? That's that's the great challenge here. Great challenge of our time. The great challenge of humanity. Uh, I, I had a good uh, ramble last night on uh, the human condition, and uh, you know, I think I think this is all what it's all about. You know, it's about trying to figure all these things out, and not within, but also without, and trying to make it all come together. And uh, well, here we are. Here we are. Great stuff. I appreciate uh, you taking notes, Tam, and uh, wrapping that all up like as neatly as you did. Fantastic stuff. Um, let's so uh, let's uh, thank you, Daryl, for chipping in. Thanks, Rohan. Uh, Jay. Jay's been here listening quietly. I think he had a point to make. What's up, Jay? Jay in New York. Welcome to the show, my man. Hi, everyone. Big fantastic conversation today. Unbelievable. I just one of the things that I think is like we go through the timely changes in what's going on with our planet. And I think a lot of that has to do with like the intergalactic orbit around like our galaxy, you know, everything in space is spinning. So rumor has it through math and all of that, that we're coming back into the same point in our particular little zone of the universe that we're in the same spot that when the dinosaurs were taken away and with the changes in water level i mean we even see that now i mean that's a major concern even for people in new york city because you know even in Binghamton, new york the amount of water that comes through there and it's always back to the water thing i think some of those things that they think took billions and billions of years might have happened in you know Years. I mean, we've had a flood here in Binghamton 10 years ago that wiped out a whole town. It's farmland again. It's gone. You know, the foundations are there and stuff like that. I mean, that thing, those things happen. And all of those people leave and go somewhere else. If something to more on a larger scale were to happen, people would scatter. You know, we would lose our technologies and things like that. And then it would come back to the stories that we were telling each other and trying to remember the one guy that was holding on to his old, old books. There's no way he was ever going to give up his old books. But when they remodeled his house, they just threw him in the dumpster because he was a crazy guy with 50 cats or whatever. <laughs> you know, knowledge gets lost on, on crazy levels every day. Just from the construction industry and we tear down buildings that were brilliantly built, you know, <laughs> things like that. A, I, I just, cookie cutter just to make a mini mall. <laughs> exactly. Know? To make a mini mall <laughs> that they're going to strip down in another 15 years to make a better one. <laughs> right. No. Well, the thing is though, is now the way that we build buildings and everything else like that, people think that they're really strong with the center blocks and the steel roof and the concrete and the gravel and all that crap. But the thing is, though, is those buildings are built. To, you don't remodel that building. You bulldoze it over. You recycle the rubble in whatever way that you do. And then you just build something new because it's cheaper and easier, faster. You know, it just knowledge lost. You know, that's a, a knowledge. My house is 200 years old. It'll be here an easy 200 years if nobody does anything because it'll take it that long to fall down. You know, it just, that's a knowledge loss. It's just, it's one of those things. We tell these stories, you know, we come on up with this. Lemuria is the one on the topic of the thing. I look at that, the depth of the ocean out that way, that's relatively shallow. How much water would it really take? I mean, how big were the polar ice caps back then? We'll move her around the, yeah. Bend of the universe when the dinosaurs were running rampant around the equator, you know, all the way up into where they were. You know, geology is probably not <laughs> one of the greatest sciences that they say they are because they're constantly wrong. I mean, they get, you know, they're coming up with trees that are millions of years old now, buried in the middle of the desert, you know, just crazy stuff like that. Sorry, Mike. I'm rambling. No, you're good, bro. All right, I uh, got a couple, a couple of funny chats. We got to read. Uh, somebody said, "Tam, bam, thank you, ma'am." <laughs> good stuff. Uh, good, good, good with the jokes here. 
that's like not my first time I've heard that. <laughs> yeah, but, right. Exactly. <laughs> that's not my first time. That's not my first rodeo. <laughs> uh, another good one. What's up? Nice Stalker says, uh, paved Lemuria to put up a parking lot. <laughs> Ah! <laughs> yes. Love it. Love it, it. There it is. There it is. What's up, guys? Uh, just reading the chat. What's going on? What's going on, guys? Uh, uh, let's see. Uh, Bill. Like, well, maybe God, God's flood did its job, right? It just wiped out everything. Like, maybe it's just as simple as that. Well, yeah. I mean, I, th- I, th- I think quite obviously, just just looking at all the all the uh, j- even the mythologies that, that all have the flood. Right, like I, 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 I literally, if if somebody's like, no, flood didn't happen, I'm like, really, bro? <laughs> like, no, there's uh, too much evidence. For yeah, that. like clearly everybody made it up all at the same time, right? That, that, I mean, that, yeah, that, that makes more sense. Like the the original <laughs> conspiracy was the flood happened. <laughs> I guess I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't know. Like, but again, right? We're we're all we're just a hip shooting and speculating. And it's all good. It's all good. Well, all right. All right, so uh, we're, uh, no giant hurry. Nobody tells us when to stop. But uh, but any other thoughts here? Well, we got you guys on an incredible group of people. As always, we've got Tam Bam here from South Africa, Rohan, the famous Liam Martin from the United Kingdom. We got Daryl in New York, and we're here with uh, Jay in New York as well. Got a couple of New New Yorkers, if you know what I'm saying. I can't even do it properly. But uh, New York, New York. I can do it. Hey, we're, we're doing a great here. job uh, holding our tongue, us New Yorkers are, because I'm our language is usually pretty foul. Ah, it's all right. It's the third hour. You're all good. You're all good. All right, but yeah, let's uh, let's uh, start winding it down. Uh, so, so what are your final thoughts on all this? Where, where do we want to start? Shall we go, ladies first? Yeah, all right. um, I think it's all like you said earlier. It's it's all speculation until you've gone there. So we can we and until we or we until we raid the Vatican vault or get something that is pretty much put in stone. It's all theory. I, I love the fact that everyone's minds are so open that the theory can, um, we can go off on these tangents and it all culminates to a point. And we really are thinking, we're so far away from each other, but we're thinking the same. And that's got to say something. Yeah, at least at least shouting in the same direction. You know, that's good enough. Even if we're not shouting yeah. the same thing, it doesn't matter, right? Imagine imagine if you had like a crowd of people shouting different things in the same direction and you were on the opposite side, it would be terrifying, would it not? <laughs> it would it would feel like the battle was about to commence. <laughs> What's that? What's I like that? my nation. At least if we're pissing into the wind, we'll all get wet, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah, don't do that. T- totally don't do that. Don't do that. Uh, all right. Uh, thank you, you. Go ahead, Daryl. Daryl, you're up. What Tan Bam said about, I don't know if it's 10,000 years or 10 million years. And I'm thinking that, why do we know more about like Atlantis and Lemuria and Poseidon and all these things that are probably 10,000 years old? And we don't know anything about like Gobekli Tepe or, you know, other, other mysteries of the world that are much older. Um, you know, I think we, we only are aware of certain folklore because it is younger. I'm just saying, you know, mm-hmm. maybe Atlantis is a much younger uh, civilization than, uh, you know, certain other ones that we have no explanation for. You know, could we have a little more information? Don't you feel like it might have been passed down verbally? If, you know, we don't have written stuff, but we certainly seem to have folklore, you know, or myths, mythology. Mythology is not that old when you look at the grand scheme of things, you know, because that's all, like, pretty much written. Uh, written um, history, and I say prehistoric is before writing, believe it or not. And if you look around the world, prehistory doesn't necessarily mean that people were writing in different ways many, many years ago. That we can't understand it is one thing, or we can't decipher it all yet, you know. But that's what I have to say. And even before that, 10,000, 10 million. Great point. Even before that, we have the oral tradition. So there's tons of these stories that go way, 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 way back. And so who knows how long this stuff was kind of passed on from generation to generation. And again, you know, go ahead and extrapolate with the game of telephone and all the rest of that stuff, right? Of course, things are going to get distorted or changed or this or that, the other thing, before they were Mm -hmm. finally written down. But still, there's going to be some element of truth in those stories because the oral tradition isn't about just ghost stories around a campfire. It's about telling stories about your ancestors, right? So, Mm -hmm. yeah, definitely good stuff. Exactly like giants. 
Yes, yeah, exactly, exactly. And, and that's where we're at. That's where we're at. So we're, we're trying to piece those things together and, you know, kind of uh, consider that, well, the world may not be what we think it is. Um, all right, let's go to Rohan, and then we'll finish up with Jay, with the J-Tro. Rohan, final thought, my friend. What's up, brother? Yeah, it's crazy stuff, isn't it? Crazy stuff, man. I, I, I've, gone into, I've gone into ancient aliens now and stuff in my head, <laughs> thinking back <laughs> to that geyser thing. Because, uh, yeah, in the geyser thing, that the basic story ended up on that was, uh, yeah, they found this ancient tech, it turns out it was like a suit of armor kind of thing. It was organic, and aliens had made it, and they used to be able to. It was like the space suit, right? But when they t- but they developed a human being to be a weapon, but when they put the space suits on people, it made us into like a super being. And I thought, mm, it's, it's like experimentation, man. So that sort of thing. Or well, maybe there's some of that going on. But yeah, that's my final thought. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. This is the deal, right? We do this uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, 7 p.m. Pacific, and we go for, uh, well, I don't know, three hours or so. Three sometimes, hours. Sometimes more than that. Uh, it just depends, right? It just depends on how it goes. And uh, so the deal is this. Tomorrow is Thanksgiving. So happy Thanksgiving to everybody out there that does celebrate this. Um, if you don't, uh, or if you do, or somewhere in between, that's all fine by me. There's no judgments here. Like I said, we, uh, I try to make this show as agnostic in all ways as possible. Uh, so we don't uh, just, you know, shit on somebody that shows up and say, oh, I believe something different. Like, wait, no, I think we can probably learn from somebody who believes something different. So that's a good thing to me. So uh, as we uh, continue this and wind this down, well, we've got an outro with Jay coming up and we will be here tomorrow for Thanksgiving. So if you guys are uh, any of you stuck out there or don't celebrate or whatever, uh, home by yourself, uh, maybe healing and recuperating and then looking at you, Daryl, get better fast. Uh, well, we'll be here for you tomorrow. So we'll have Troubled Minds tomorrow with a regular time, even though it's Thanksgiving. I realize a lot of you will be eating dinner with your family and whatnot, but uh, maybe you East Coasters will uh, have the second round of turkey as you're listening to Troubled Minds. So we'll be back tomorrow night at 7 p.m. Pacific. And let's do the outro, the J-Tro. Let's do the J-Tro. Right, final thought first, and then we'll do the J-Tro. Take your time, sir. I just... One of the things that, you know, you were saying about the oral history, you know, just passing on and on, you would lose all the technical data. You know, you get your 1979 pickup truck or something like that. You're going around looking for the actual manual for it. They don't exist anymore. They're lost. Thrown in dumpsters. You know, then it becomes an oral tradition. I learned it, so I teach it to you. So if we learn as much as we could possibly learn about all these different things, you know, the names might get changed around a little bit. They might not get pronounced correctly or anything else like that, but at least we'll be able to pass that knowledge on. I mean, we're in a situation where we have a group of people here that's unbelievably smart and we just bombard each other with knowledge about 8 billion different things every day. And, that's try to learn as much as you can and pass it on, share. You know? That's the purpose of life actually is to pass down knowledge that you've learned. It's not just about mating and you know, what? procreation. It's what? really passing down you have knowledge. To pass that knowledge on to your kids or they're not gonna do well. You what have you learned in your life? It's share about, it. It's not about drinking beer and having sex. What's wrong with you, Tam Bam? I'm sorry. Uh, well, that's what gets you more kids. <laughs> that's why. Wow. What the, what the, the hell? hell? I'm making jokes. <laughs> I'm making jokes. I'm making jokes. All right. Uh, uh, all right. Uh, good, good stuff, Jay. Good stuff, Jay. As always, right? <laughs> Peter says, it's all about mating. It's all about mating. Ah! <laughs> all right, Jay. Jay, what else? What else, my friend? <laughs> Let's see. see what Sometimes happens. I feel like I'm like playing Grand Theft Auto with guys that are on like level 8 billion or something like that. And I'm the guy driving the Prius, you know, on the way to get a coffee or something. You know, you guys are just, I'm way out of my league. Yeah. No, no, you're not. No, you're, no, you're, not. Not. You're, you're here. You're here with your people, and that's that's what this is about. You're definitely. Um, do you have? Don't any, steal my Prius. Yeah, don't steal my Prius. Don't 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 jack me. Please don't. <laughs> uh, so okay. So do you have a, a JTRO for us? Shall we do this? I do right? absolutely. Okay, it's, just yeah. just one moment, and I will give you the uh, music. Uh, are you guys hearing yourselves back? Apparently not, not. yet. No. Nope. All right. No. Nope. Oh well, shit! I pushed the wrong button, and I guess it 
didn't matter. All right. So we're going to do this. We're going to play this as the outro. Uh, remember, we'll be back tomorrow night at, for th- Happy Thanksgiving. We're going to call it, uh, what are we calling it, Night Stalker? We're calling this uh, 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 Troubled Minds Troubled Giving. Minds Giving. Troubled Minds Giving. We will be back tomorrow with Troubled Minds Giving at 7 p.m. Pacific, doing the regular radio thing. And here we go. Here's a little bit of music for Jay and his uh, Jaytro. And let's get the hell out of here. Oh. Go right ahead. Sir. Be thankful. Every chance you get, not because life is easy, perfect, or exactly the way you anticipated, because you choose to be happy and grateful for all the good things that you have and all the problems you know you don't. Perfect timing, sir. The bass dropped right as you finished. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> great quote, great quote. The thing is this, right? Uh, I find it ironic that we have to pick a day of the year to be thankful. I think Thanksgiving can be every day, and that's what we do here at Troubled Minds. We get together and be thankful uh, for the moment. We have our health, we have each other, and we have, well, uh, amazing thoughts, and we share them. And just like uh, Tam said, it's about passing on this knowledge. The oral tradition is not lost. Just because we have the Internet, the oral tradition is amplified. Let us speak. Let us think, let us learn, let us be together, and let us be thankful for all of that. Thank you all for listening for tonight. Thanks to all the amazing calls, the great people here to, uh, at the end. We got Tam Bam, we got Rohan, we got Daryl in New York, we got Jay in New York. All the rest of the calls, you know who you are. If I, if I uh, try and list everybody, I will, well, forget somebody, and I'll be in the doghouse. So, you know who you are. Thank you for calling. Thanks for participating. Thanks for all the amazing chat, all the great thoughts. We will be back tomorrow at 7 p.m. Pacific for more Troubled Minds. And as we finish, you know how this goes. If you want to help the show, spread the word. Uh, we've got a, a, a Patreon if you really dig it. If you super really dig it, we got a rock fan that's 10 bucks a month. You get access to all kinds of other cool stuff if you pay for that. And then uh, uh, also uh, Twitch and then the podcast feed. If you want to help us and you only have time and not money, that's fine. Listen to the podcast feed. There's commercials baked in. Pennies become dollars. Dimes, dimes become dollars. I messed it up. Anyway, point being, thank you for listening. We're going to do this. Tam, you want to say it? As we finish. No, 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 no. Be sure. Be strong. Be true. Be true. Thank you for listening. From our troubled minds to yours, have a great night. Happy Thanksgiving, and we'll see you guys tomorrow at 7 p.m. Pacific. Thank you guys, everybody here, everybody listening. We'll see you tomorrow. All right, this is where we howl, guys. Let it out. Let it out. How are you? <laughs> that was miserable. That was miserable. You guys could do better than that. We're wet chihuahuas, I'm telling you. Miserable. Get down. Give me two. All right. So uh, also, by the way, Algo is in the chat. Algo Rhythm, Mike in Colorado. Uh, looks like we've agreed to do an extra show on Saturday. Stay tuned for that time. We'll announce oh. that tomorrow. Uh, Algo and I are going to be on this weekend doing more of this, more of this type of stuff, talking about all kinds of whack shit because that's what I do. That's what he does, and it'll be wild when we get together. There you go. Thank you for listening. Mark Trouble, Minds to yours. Have a great night. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Happy Thanksgiving. Ooh. <laughs> what the Horrible. Horrible. (laughs) Horrible. All right, guys.